Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Dragon Street Gaming. Tonight we are playing in our uh, second recording, first episode of uh, A Blades in the P Conse uh, Oh my goodness, uh, Sins and Consequences: A Blades in the Dark Actual Play Podcast. Um, tonight, um, returning, of course, we have. Um, Adam, Ethan, and CJ, and we're just going to get right into introductions after I talk a little bit about someone really cool I got to talk to this week. Uh, their name is Sydney Fable, um, and you'll find that most of the music that's, uh, that's playing in the background of this podcast was written, composed, and uh, created by Sydney Fable, some of it specifically just for this show. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, no, and and it's really cool stuff. Um, so, um, I mean, you can find them on YouTube at Sydney Fable. Uh, that's S Y D N E Y uh, Fable, as in like the story. So F A B L E. Um, and also, you can check out their glam rock band called the Blam Blams, because um, that stuff I is actually it. pretty rad. Yeah. Um, oh, so just you know, if you're into glam rock and um, eerie ambient um, or steampunk music, uh, Sydney Fable is your person. Um, and um, yeah, we'll uh, we'll just start off with introductions here. I'm gonna start off with uh, CJ. CJ, why don't you say hi? Hello. Hey. You get up to anything exciting this week, CJ? Oh. <laughs> it's okay to say no. You There's your no answer. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> nah. I, I all right. nah. That's all right. All right. I am a, I am a boring person. I like to come home after work and slug. That's all right. Nice. Slug what have you been slugging? Video game. What, what oh. video game? What are you playing? A highly addicting fashion game. <laughs> what, what is it? I'm very girly. What is it? That's fair. Is what? it Love no. Nikki? No. no. I used to. Good. I used I used to be on that. That's now fair. now it's oh. Fashion Dreamer, which apparently every like the, all stores have decided no, we will not sell this game anymore. Good luck finding it. But my friend oh. has a cop. I actually had to tell my wife to stop playing Love Nikki because the credit card bills would come in. And it's oh like yeah. <laughs> Yikes! Um, I don't even know what that is, but it, it sounds bad. It's a it's like a phone game, so they got like those microtransactions. They oh, had right on. Okay. It, yeah. A bit. Um, all right. Um, actually, this week I've been playing a lot of Slay the Spire. Uh, oh, no microtransactions, yeah, but it is a fucking huge time sink. Like I've um, oh, yeah, I'm on Ascension level six. Wow. With all with all four of the characters, and and yeah, like Shit. that took a long time to do. Um, obviously I've been playing it more than just this week. Uh, that takes a long time. <laughs> to do, but, um, yeah. Well, I'm Ethan. Ethan, what are you up to this week? What are you doing? Who are you playing today, by the way, CJ? Actually, before Ethan's allowed to talk. Okay. Put the muzzle on. <laughs> Tonight I will be playing Myri Skelkalon, a leech. Leech. That's oh, what, that's that's what right. they're all. Yeah. All right. Now, Ethan, you can take the muzzle off. You're allowed to talk. <laughs> All right, thank you. It's a little uncomfortable. Um, yeah, so I am happy to be back again. I'm going to be playing Vey Helker. Um, as far as what I've been up to this week, um, so as far as the video game grind goes, I've been grinding pretty hard. I have found myself back into old school RuneScape, which is, you know... Oh, wow. A game I never thought I'd get back into, but I don't know how. Um, I just kind of... Found myself there again, and I'm playing. So there's some regrets, but it's mostly fun. Um, <laughs> and then the other thing that I learned this week was um, my wife was watching uh, this this movie yesterday, and I was like, "Oh, what what is it?" And and it was this this operatic movie, and um, I realized that the opera was in English, and I had never realized that you can have opera in English, and it's so much worse. It's absolutely <laughs> awful. There's there's something about understanding what they're saying that just kind of <laughs> it pulls away all the magic and kind of just reminds you everything you hate about musicals so that's kind of what i learned this week dude that's amazing i felt i felt the exact same way when i watched repo uh i don't know if you're familiar with repo the genetic opera it uh, oh yeah i was like oh I'm like yeah. this is this is miserable <laughs> sorry guys oh, i'm bumping around but you know, I'll repo the genetic opera is is fucking awful, but I love it. It's oh so my dumb. God. 
Um, I, uh, actually, um, <laughs> years ago, Ethan and I went to go see uh, uh, Dracula the Opera. What? And that was, I think, the worst thing I've ever seen. It was just like in a, a random opera in a church. Remember it was that? amazing. It was like a love project <laughs> of this very interesting, possibly deranged kind of man. And it's one of those, <laughs> if you would believe it, the main character was him, of course. And uh, we went there as, um, I think it was like a birthday celebration or something. And I remember it finished and we all kind of, it was a group of friends. We looked at each other and we went, we're not allowed to laugh at this. Everyone here is friends and family of this very nice gentleman. Yeah. We need to go to the car. And we just like, <laughs> as a group, very probably less subtly than we wanted to kind of walked back over and we just erupted once the doors all shut it was it was awful it was so bad they had exactly one light exactly one light to light the stage and they just had to like move it around like like somebody <laughs> It's like amazing. next level, like like, and I mean like passion, like like do do what you want to do, but sometimes what you want to do isn't good, and that's okay too. <laughs> like, you know. Oh man, that is that is fantastic. Do you guys ever see the movie Forgetting Sarah Marshall? Oh yeah, love it. Yeah, dude, it's, with yeah. The, the Dracula puppet musical, like that's immediately what I thought of. I'm like, I'm like, I would pay money to go see a Dracula puppet musical, and then I'm thinking, I'm like, would I? Like, yeah, I would, but like, I would probably hate it, but like, but I would, I would go. And uh, I wish I was but there. The you. difference is, is like, like when you're dead. trying to do something that's like purposely satirical. Sorry, excuse me, I'm burping. Um, when you're trying to do something purposely satirical, like that was, versus like this guy was earnestly putting himself out there. Like it was like a Tommy Wiseau moment without the fun. Oh man, that poor guy. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, you can hear Adam talking. You might as well introduce yourself, Adam. Who are you playing today? Oh, uh, hi. Yeah, I'm Adam. Hello. I'm uh, I'm 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 me. Uh, I am going to be playing Ludes, uh, Ludwig Achten. He is a uh, weird dude, uh, sneaky and weird is the vibe. So uh, uh, be ready for that. Um, man, what have I been up to? Um, been hanging out. Uh, uh, my home time has been spent. A lot of it's been with uh, with my daughter. Uh, I had some solo dad time over the past couple of days, which is always uh, it's fun and weird. And my daughter is she's two and a half years old, and she is a silly weirdo. Uh, we spent about uh, two hours yesterday going through her rocks. She's got a couple of pretty cool rocks, but like it's it's there's like six of them. We spent like two and a half hours going through them, and she goes. <gasps> so cool and then i'm like yeah dude and then she gives me the rock and then she goes awesome and i'm like yeah awesome and then she's like dad look and i'm like wow and she's like a gray rock and i'm like yeah <laughs> uh so i did that uh most of most of last night and uh i loved every minute of it man um otherwise let's see i've been uh working through the second shadow run game from harebrained schemes the uh uh, uh dragonfall and I, that's the only one I've never played through. And it's, it's, it's pretty good. Um, I, I hate the troll and, uh, you know, uh, I'm dealing with that, but I'm getting there. And, um, what else? I feel like there's other things. I don't know. I was at work. I did some work at work. Uh, okay. listen to some podcasts. I'm back on, an, uh, one that I was listening to before, uh, not a shadow run podcast. I've been listening to the redacted reports, um, it is a Delta Green podcast. I am like two, three years behind, but uh, but that's good, man. That's a lot of fun. Those guys have some uh, some weird stories. They tackle some of the pre-written adventures that are uh, things that I couldn't do myself. Like the one I just finished. It's a it's a story called Lovers in the Ice, and um, they tackled it in a way that was very tasteful, even though it's about a like a like a penis monster. Uh, that, uh, you know, bangs you, and then you get filled with uh, penis monster larvae and then start trying to fuck. And they, man, they did it in a way, like, they didn't say fuck until, like, the 12th episode of it. And it was somebody going, like, oh, fuck. And um, it takes place, check this out, the setting for it is, it's a place called Bonner's Ferry, and no one made a Boner Ferry joke the entire time. And I was really impressed with them. So all you guys, great job, and uh, uh, I'm enjoying it very much. I would highly recommend it. It's called The Redacted Reports. 
uh, check them out if you get a chance. It's it's a lot of fun. Sounds yeah. like some Seinfeld level writing there for that. Good for them. It, it, yeah. like, it's it's uh, it's written in a way that like it's all very like dark and serious and like dangerous and mysterious, but like clearly it's got boner in the fucking name of the city. And like it's it's a it's a like a like a penis gorilla that's like jumping around and like it's <laughs> but it's serious. Okay, so there's a movie. I'm gonna keep going uh, for the whole time. I'm sorry, guys. There's a movie. I forgot what it's called. It's a it's a Spanish movie from Spain or Mexico maybe. I'm not sure. I don't remember which. But in English, it's called The Similars. And like the premise for this movie is there's a bunch of people that get stranded in like a bus station during this like horrible like hurricane, and all of them are slowly turning into the same dude. Like the, this, this guy with like this, this, uh, he looks like Kenny Loggins, but with like, I don't know, but, uh, it's, it's such a stupid thing, but it's played in a way that it's, it's so like dead serious and like the dread is real, but like, they're just like, oh no, the old lady's grown a beard. <laughs> like it, it's so silly. I highly recommend that too. It's called the similars. Look it up. Check it out. All right. I'll All shut right. up. Let's All right. Again. And, uh, <laughs> last but not least, it's me. It's me. Um, I'm Aaron. I'm your GM, your storyteller today. Um, I'm playing everybody. These people aren't. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm explaining rules. There'll be a lot of rules explanations today. Uh, just because this is our first time bumping up against them. It's our first score. Uh, before we get into that, I did want to say I finally watched the movie Seven Psychopaths this week. And it's a rad movie. It. You should. It's on Netflix, or at least it's on Canadian Netflix. Um, oh, it's, that's very different from American Netflix, actually. Well, so just, it, it, has, it has worse selection, generally speaking. Oh. But yeah, um, yeah, we just have fewer things. Um, but um, yeah, Christopher Walken was amazing in it. Um, and like Colin Farrell. And, like, I don't know. It's just a fucking weird movie. And I liked it. So that's what my recommendation is this week. You should watch Seven Psychopaths. Um, yeah, but like, let's get started on this game. This game called Blades in the Dark. Uh, last week, we um, we created our characters. We kind of got a general idea of what our crew is going to be. Um, and we, um, we gathered some information while the three of you were inside Iron Hook Prison. Um, does anyone remember well enough to do the recap about what we learned last week? Or would you like me to do it? It's okay, I got it. I got it. Yeah, I'll take, take that it silence away. as I, I got mean... it. Do you mean like okay. everything we learned, or? But well, like, what, what, do we want to? We could we could do round table, round robin, um, highlights. Oh, yeah. then you can you know what? Us in. You know what? <laughs> I, I just I just edited the episode, so I definitely know what happens. But I'll, I'll start with Adam. Adam, what do you remember about what you learned last week? <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Well, I learned uh, I learned a lot about how the game works and how to build a character. Uh, I also learned a couple of interesting facts about what's going on here. So I was told by a um, apparently a very very old man you said he was old before and I just imagined like like old for like a like a criminal so I imagined him in like in his 50s but you showed a picture and like that dude's old um, but uh, what what's his name what's this dude's name his name is Tarval and and Tarval Tarf. just um, and I'll show the picture again there Tarval is. is 75 but he lives in Duskball which means that he looks like he's like 85 or 90 because okay yeah like that's a thing like you live hard in this world you you eat eels live and hard, mushrooms so basically nothing else yeah exactly oh yeah it's so this dude pants, this picture so. this <laughs> this picture you put up this dude's got like ropey muscles like he's like very lean but he still looks like he could like tear a phone book in half um but uh so this guy right he's my cellmate he's an old man he's the leader of this bill hooks gang which are allowed to walk around with meat hooks and shit in prison which is awful and uh he told me some terrible thing is gonna happen in three days basically and that i need to get the fuck out and i decided i need to get the fuck out i talked to my toilet cleaning crew uh which are you two fine folks and uh we've decided to try to get the hell out of here uh i also remember finding out about a big big dude called the bear who beat up a bunch of guards and got thrown into a solitary confinement kind of situation. And uh, right. he may possibly be... Oh, there he is. Look at that picture. That guy's big. He looks like a pirate, too. I love him. He, he reminds me of um someone who I can't think of off the top of my head. He's a big old pirate fella. 
uh, bushy beard, cottony, and uh, he is he's like like two men glued together. He's big, large fella. Yes, yeah, bear is freaking huge. Um, he I got call that him name a double man. He's like black bear size, not like grizzly beard size. Like he's not inhumanly huge, but he's about as big as humans get. Um, pretty big. But yeah, yeah. Learn about bear. Um, I think you also kind of had some. Um, you you had an experience with a ghost uh, that re that recalls that it helped you understand that these um, these bars are not necessarily secured very well. Yes, um, probably because Iron Hook Prison is almost a thousand years old, um, and so they're really just kind of upgrading an existing building over and over again. And they may have fallen behind on their upkeep. Um, how about you, CJ? Do you have anything super that you remember? Um, or that we can that you want to go over from last week? Yes, I remember that the the bill hooks they yeah they have influence in the prison. They also they're like pretty much rubbing elbows with the the cops that run it. But so they also have a sort of crack in the wall where they're getting in and out contraband and stuff. So that's something. Yes. Um, while we were while well, I was doing investigation it, we found that uh, there is about a t half hour period where no one's using the bathrooms since we're, we're so familiar with the bathrooms and cleaning them so much yes let's spit all these bathroom facts going on now and yes <laughs> we got all these bathroom facts I hope you guys don't, don't, put bleach in the, don't put bleach in the toilet bowls don't put bleach in the toilet bowls Hear me out. Uh, you guys, as much Here's research your... about. You go. Okay, you go first, Adam, and then I'll. I was going to talk about mixing clean chemicals uh, in order to make mustard gas. Uh, so check this out, listeners at home. If you get bleach and you mix it with what? Uh, uh, I'm, I'm getting. I'm being told to shut up. Never mind. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, yeah, and then um, you also yeah. learned that the spirit wardens were around. I think you yes. all kind of got that vibe. Um, it's it's very they're, unusual, they were but around and they were also taking like one person a day or something. Um, you don't know how many people they're taking because there's a, there's a few of them kind of going around the prison. There's at least four that you've seen, and they're very mm -hmm. distinct individuals. Like, I'll, I'll just I just kind of brought up like a picture. Um, where the hell is it? There it is. Oh, okay. For some reason, that one is not working but that's okay but yeah they're they're like kind of wearing like really big like robes and they're all kind of dressed like with different animal masks or like different like kind of motifs um it seems that there's not like a uniform so much as just an aura like um an invitation to to, to fuck around and find out is, is kind of the, the 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 dress code for the spirit wardens um and um, they, as far as you know, that they're taking at least a couple people a day. Um, but again, like it's a large prison, so you don't know what they're doing or how, or if they're leaving the prison even and coming back. Um, so, yeah, but there's at least four of them that you've seen. Um, and also, we'll get... for the window situation of the bars, you know, there's only windows on the second and third. Yes, that is correct. Yeah. Um, the first floor has no windows except for facing into the yard. Because um, um, if you look at the Iron Hook floor plan I provided, uh, there's that center circular part. That's the outside yard. And then there's a chapel in the middle, which is just okay. kind of um, a leftover from the old, old days. Um, it's not really in use, though you've seen um, um, Ethan... Ethan, you were talking to a Bill Hook in the bathrooms, and he mentioned the um, Path of Echoes weirdos. I think he called them something like that. Um, that were milling about. They spend a lot of time in that chapel um, when they're out in the yard. But um, other than that, it's just kind of graffiti covered, and people have taken like spoons and knives and stuff like that and carved their initials in it. It's just kind of profaned at this point. Um, and then Ethan. Besides right. the path, the fact was, what well, did you learn last week? 
I gotta say, I think the other two descriptions were, were decently good. Um, so I'll give a little bit specifics on my side. And so my character, Vey, they're in a very, very small cell stuck in with uh, Sawtooth, the is it physicer. Um, he's a physician. Physiker. Physiker. Okay. He is a ether addicted um, physiker. Uh, and he's uh, a little crazy. Um, I think, kind of thinking about it, since we we last chatted, um, I've grown to like him a lot more. So I'm yeah. hoping oh, as much as possible that um, I don't know. Maybe we can find a way of keeping him along because I feel like he's got just the most jovial laugh, and um, I feel like he can maybe add a lot to this story. Um, with how much that uh, Adam and CJ just kind of talked through, I feel like he covered most of the facts. So maybe yeah. just for the sake of um, the fact that we're looking at a picture and everyone else is kind of listening in through audio, I can maybe kind of talk a bit about what the prison is. Um, and so it's very much a circular kind of prison looking like a, like a basic kind of snowflake of like six different branches that kind of go out with a central yard and then a chapel um, kind of stuck in the very middle of that um yeah i think that's yeah. about all the facts that we got yeah so it, it, it has um one two three four five six i just want to make sure uh so it has six wings to it on the outside that are like pentagonal shaped it's like a hexapentagon oh um, uh, yeah it, it's a the the outer pentagon the the five side or the four sides on the outside that have all the little lines on them those are all cells so there's uh, six kind of wings of cells. Um, they're all pretty much in use, but not like there might be one or two that's empty at any given time. Um, and this layout basically copies three times. Okay, so it um, just stacks up the same way? Exactly, yeah. Okay. Oh, and maybe that's an interesting fact. So I know uh, Myri is um, stuck on the, the first floor. I am on the second floor, and uh, Ludwig is on the third yes and um ludwig's uh cell is slightly larger than yours just in case you want another reason to distrust the man um i the one npc we didn't interact with her much last week but um myrie's character or myrie uh, cj's character is um oh. there's a woman that's um that's a young woman that's been in the cell with her she's kind of just been um sobbing um, and kind of obviously not prepared for prison life. Is um, is she an elf? She looks like an elf in this no. picture. No. Okay. It's really hard to to make yeah. demonic people that don't look too demonic. Um, <laughs> uh, but she's Beautiful a Tykerosi woman. Yes. Um, she has like a long uh, tail made out of bone um, is kind of her demonic taint. And then she's got like kind of piercing blue eyes that don't have irises. <laughs> That's kind of what I was trying to go for. Um, and she's like a docker is what she is. But um, we'll see if doctor? she comes up. If, if you docker, like, oh, so she's okay. like a dock worker. Okay. But in the, okay. but she's like a member of the docker guild. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, and so with all this information, your characters have three days of planning and, and stuff like that to kind of go over. You guys learned some information. You gathered some information last time. If we're going through and you're finding like, oh, I really wish I knew this, we can kind of do a flashback to gather more information. And depending on what you guys are doing, it may just be a zero stress flashback. Not all flashbacks cost stress. Um, That's gotta be nice. Because the way, <laughs> yes. Um, because while we've had a week to, um, in theory, plan and stuff like that, um, I hope you guys didn't because you're gonna throw all that out the window because your characters did all the planning for you, okay? Um, nice. Just a little bit about characters in Blades in the Dark. You guys are scoundrels and you're competent scoundrels. Okay? Oh. Your characters are more competent <laughs> than than you will ever be in real life, probably. Um, at many too things. Hard. Yeah, that's, you know? not, that's, not, that's not setting the bar too high. <laughs> <laughs> but, um... Yeah, like they they are much better at even the things that they have zero pips in. They're they're usually better than like the average person at those things, um, because these are people that are underdogs, but they have a chance to succeed. And so, like, don't um, assume always that your character is doing a smart, intelligent thing, and try to keep that in mind as you go. And I'll do the same. 
because I shouldn't be levying consequences that are like you slip on a banana peel because you're such a klutz. It should just Great. be that the it. world is that tough. Um, and so the way that we begin a score is with um, we have to decide on a um, an approach. And so I'm going to um, I'm going to show this to you guys just so that we're all looking at the same thing. You should be able to activate. Okay. There we go. Oh, yes. There goes. Um, yeah. Um, sorry, I just had to change the ownership on it. Um, okay. So, we go to um, the approach and the detail, which is kind of the first one at the top there. Um, okay. we, got, we need to decide right now kind of what the approach is. And this is just going to set the tone for how we're starting and, and how we're hopefully going to finish this score. Do you guys think you want to do an assault? Um, take a deceptive approach, a stealthy approach, an occult approach, a social approach, or a transport approach. And transport would be like smuggling or moving things. And I actually think any of these can work for this score. So I, I could see we'll... how a transport thing could work, but I feel like, uh, in my opinion, uh, look at these, I think deceptive because under deception it says lure, trick, or manipulate I feel like might be the way to go. Because uh, we were thought we were talking briefly about um, basically getting the bear out and having him cause like a distraction, right? I had a different idea for creating a distraction. Yeah, what do you got? Um, it, it would be like a flashback. I I just, but I wanted to set up a ghost ward that would cause a huge distraction because ghost the spirits would be swimmer torment in. So, okay, so you basically cult. make like a hole for ghosts to just like come to? Yeah. Uh, How's that work? Yeah. I, 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 it, it doesn't. We haven't decided. Like, that's kind of the way that powers work in this. We kind of decide in the moment how they work. Um, okay. And then we stick to it. So, Ghost okay. Ward, it kind of says that you, you use a, you make a wreck action. Um, and then that creates a site that is either repellent or um, like a lure for ghosts. Oh, and, so um, you can, I, you can basically bash like a hole in the barrier between life and death, and have a bunch of ghosts pour in. Yeah, and, and I was gonna give you a little bit of leeway with that because if you wanted it to be the kind of thing where you want to be able to knock out a wall with that ability, that's something we can work out. So, my idea hope- was. Uh, do you want me to say my idea? Or? Yeah, please. Absolutely. My idea was more of to like, since we know that the bathrooms have those 20 half hour periods of being free, I was wanting to like be able to like sketch out runes or whatever in them to make like some sort of triangulate a thing that would make like a like sigil thing that like would like make a certain area of it, like make it that lure. So a bunch of spirit like would just come swarming in. Okay. Um, I like that. I like that a lot, actually. Um, and, and yeah, that would probably would be a flashback, um, depending on when you want to do it and, and honestly, the result of your engagement role, um, because, um, that's just a thing we'll go over in a second. Um, but if you, if you roll poorly on your engagement role, you guys get caught a little bit unawares. Think something happens that you weren't expecting. Uh, If you roll really well, everything's kind of going exactly as you expected and you have the upper hand. And so okay, if so you have the upper hand and you want that to be a thing, then that's just how it works. Okay. So your Sorry, idea is you, to try you... to like uh, basically have like a bunch of ghosts show up as a distraction and then and yeah. then what? And then what? And then uh, my idea was we we get the bear because we still either if we go through the the transport thing that the skull duggers or whatever are using or we break through bars, we need someone big and strong to do that, and we I thought that's what we were gonna, we could bust out the bear then, and he would tear out a wall, and then we could okay, tear out a window, so, and then we get out. While, while the ghosts are causing havoc, no one's gonna really notice us breaking out okay. bear. Fair okay, enough. so we've got and, a ghost distraction, then the Which would bear be an breakout. occult approach, is what I'll say. Um, hmm? Like, I would call that an occult okay. approach. Um, and that, and yeah, these absolutely. kind of just give me as the GM a hook for me to kind of like throw stuff at you if it doesn't go well um, so that I'm not describing a bunch of stuff that you don't need. Um, you know what I mean? Um, oh, yeah. So we kind of have a deception approach um, in getting Bear to help you out. Or uh, that might even be a social 
um, approach to negotiate, bargain, persuade. Um, uh, yeah, my thought was we're going to gonna, we're gonna lure the bear or trick the bear into helping us get out, was my thought of what, why I chose deception. But yes, no, okay, social fair. makes sense too. Absolutely. I, I yeah. feel like it could that thing could be approached from either angle and still work. I like... Dude, I like this. I like this. It's um, so, they're they're vague and open enough that you could really bullshit your way into most of these through the same yeah. plan. It's awesome. So, yeah. I don't know if I'm gonna throw another idea out there or if I'm in Do fact it. just putting a wrench into everyone else's plan. But like, I think all six of us can get out. You know, I think same. that there's an amount of you know. Um, I would love to go with the plan of getting all six of us out and um, we'll see how things go. Maybe someone is lost along the way, you know, like you're talking like, hey, let's use bear as a distraction. It's like, well, but what if we can get bear out with us? You know, what if that just like be it. a great starting pawn to kind of, st or uh, yep. an ally to start with, right? Yeah, I was but... gonna say, don't call him a pawn. Don't call him a pawn. <laughs> <laughs> not not like in front that. of him. Yeah, but no, definitely. If we can, if we can bust that, if if he gets out with us, I feel like we've got a little bit of leverage to try to recruit, like a like a little bit of a leg breaker. I love that. I I love that. You you keep saying six. Who the who the fuck else are we talking about? <laughs> I mean, that's that's well, four by my count. There's the girl in my cell, and then I one of the other I, the psych psychiker. Uh, physiker, yeah. like so, physician, but just yeah. a little bit. Right, and it's like I don't, I don't quite know where Sawtooth is at. You know, the last time I talked to him, he's, um, you know, still kind of coming out of um, of his ether addiction. So um, maybe, maybe a quick chat would kind of see how um, useful he'll be, right? But like, I think okay. when it kind of comes to breaking out of a prison, there's kind of the whole idea of, you know. Are you able to get any weapons? What's the hole look like? And, you know, what's the plan? What's the score? Like, how do we actually, like, execute in on it? And so I think the whole idea of, like, gathering as much as we can go, and then you just start kind of pushing forward, and, you know, hopefully everyone makes it. But if not, then, you know, having a little bit of cover and, and making sure that, you know, us three as the plan makers, you know, we have to make it, and hopefully we can bring along some friends. But okay, uh, okay, okay, okay. So it's, so it's the three of us plus the bear, the doctor, and the mysterious creepy lady. Okay. Fair enough. Um, I have no yeah. interest in trying to bring. Uh, what's his name? Tor Torvald. Tor Torvald. Is it, is it, he, he, Torvald? I think he's. That would be very opposite. Um, I, don't I think want, he I don't would want immediately to ever, ever see him again. <laughs> ever. <laughs> Fair enough. And sorry, CJ. Um, I think you cut out there. What, what were you oh. saying? I, I thought he was part of like the Bill Hooks. He is. Yeah, he's this, the yeah. leader of the Bill I don't want to deal with him ever again. <laughs> he's also the only person in Iron Hook prison serving a life sentence. So, whatever you. You you probably don't like like he's not allowed to leave the prison. I don't even think he cares to leave the prison. He's doing well here. Yeah, yeah, and um, he's killed me at least once. Uh, it might not be Mimi, but I experienced <laughs> being killed by him at least once. I'm okay without that guy. Yeah, and so we're gonna um now that we kind of have a plan. Um, I think we have enough of an understanding that. <clears throat> Um, it's somewhere between occult, deception, social. <clears throat> um, but we know who we want to talk to. We know who we want, where where we want to move. Um, you guys also don't have to move together um, within the plane for this score to work. Um, so, like, if you end up having, okay. like, someone goes to get bear and then somebody else is like looking to like clear away in the thing. You don't have to be together the whole time. This does not play by D&D &D rules. Uh, split the party. The only thing it will hinder is your ability to assist each other uh, directly. Um, like you okay, can't okay. and do things like dive in the way of bullets for each other um, because you're not in the same room. Um, and so we go right from that to the engagement room. And so um, you scroll down a little bit um, we we are gonna do an engagement roll. Before we do, um, the way that this works, it's a fortune roll, and it starts with one dice, just for sheer luck. And um, and then we we gotta go through a checklist, and we see if we add or remove dice. 
Um, so we'll start with the first one. Is this operation particularly bold or daring? Oh, we'll, we'll roll at them all at once there. Okay. Um, whoever, whoever wrote that. <laughs> Sorry. Um, <laughs> that's okay. I'm down. Yeah, that I'm, one's okay. I'm very excited. <laughs> I'm ready. All right. Um, and so is this particular operation particularly bold or daring? If it is, take one extra dice. If it's operation complex or contingent on many factors, take a negative one. Um, I'll say it's bold and daring. It sounds like you're going to freaking bring ghosts down upon um, hundreds of people um, and create a lot of chaos in what is already an incredibly tense environment. Um, so, yeah, uh, definitely a lot of chaos. Um that you are purposely enacting into the world. Uh, so we'll, we're up to two dice. All Does right. the plan's detail expose a vulnerability of the target or hit them where they're weakest? Uh, take one What's D. The target? the target is the prison in this case. So Ironhook Prison is its own faction in the world. That's I your target. I would argue yes. I would argue yes. I mean, we're exposing a vulnerability of... Because uh, we're trying to get out through either the shitty bars or the like this um uh what's the word i'm looking for contraband uh route so i mean that's that to me feels like a weakness so i think that counts okay um I, i'll agree with you yeah i i want you guys to do well and um i will say that there's stuff outside the prison so um you know once you get out of the prison there's a whole nother legwork you have to actually leave done slow um all right keep that in mind but I think that it's a large enough area. If you create enough of a hassle, it might be easy. It might not be. But we'll see what the rolls tell us. But that's what those rolls are for. This is a different role. Um, can any of your friends or contacts provide aid or insight for this operation? Um, or are any enemies or rivals interfering with the operation? I will say that there's no enemies or rivals interfering with this operation. Nobody knows who you are in Iron, um, in Iron Hook. Um, beyond like just that you're people that are also prisoners here. Nobody hates you enough yet. Friend, um, friends or contacts, like these aren't like direct friends or contacts that like we have as far as the the world. But like it does sound like is is it fair to say that like the you know bear sawtooth and and the the creepy um, woman count? I would say that sawtooth is friendly enough to you that if you plan on using him in this operation, he's volatile and kind of unreliable enough that I'm not going to give you a bonus. You that don't know yeah. you don't yeah. know Baird. You've never spoken to him before, so I'm also gonna say he's a bit of a wild card. Um I'm not gonna give you a plus one D because um Elise yep. Yep. is yep. her yeah. name. Is is just she's just a girl and she's not a particularly tough one at that. So that's a that's a flat. We're up to three dice. Are there any other elements you want to consider? Um yeah, I'm going to take away one dice because um, despite how rickety this building is, um, the guards in Iron Hook Prison are prepared to fight unarmed people um, or people with like access to like homemade weapons like shivs and stuff like that because um, that's what they do for a living. Um, and so I am going to say that the guards are going to be a problem for you. There's also other elements at play here like the spirit wardens, the... Um, the path of echoes you don't know what they're up to um all of these things can cause complications for you guys and so we're gonna settle at two dice total and so if you go to the little dice icon in the far left side um you okay. should be able to click engagement um it'll come up with a pop list so click that and it says roll some dice um, and it says roll types, fortune, gather information, engagement, indulge vice, acquire asset, click engagement, and then bring it down to two dice and roll. All of us? Whoever, uh, no, just one. Um, who's ready to make that roll? Um, Ethan or CJ? I, I have the pop-up up. up so I have it up. I'll... Oh, you have it up? Go ahead. Yeah. Very yeah. trusting of you. Ooh. That was a performance decision. Oh. You guys start in a desperate position. Okay, guys? So, we'll just start with what was the first part of your guys' plan? What were you trying to do? Um, just keep it vague, um, because I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll make it more specific. 
So this isn't talking so like we're kind of jumping ahead of the planning, right? Like so this is like yes. is, is this one of those like this isn't me talking to Sawtooth or um you know no. Myri talking. Yeah, so this is like going into the execution of things. Um Yeah. yeah. I don't know. This is CJ, us do as you want players. the reins or do you want me to jump in? Um uh, I'd would it either be the the ghost word going off or would it be talking to Bear to see if he's on board? No, we're, we're, we're jumping past recruitment oh. and I think into execution and then we yeah. like hindsight do that, right? That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Is that How is that execution going? Are we getting Bear first or is it the thing going first? Oh, um, oh, that's a good point. Um, I'd say that we would be... In my head, when the explosion happens, uh, that's when like everyone should be together and that's like you know when like the arrow should be kind of piercing out of of the prison right so i think it's fair to say that the the recruitment and kind of getting the posse together and in position happens either at the same time or right before the explosion happens because unless there's like that's also when there's distractions so we should just like get in for that so and so are you all moving together to go get bear that's that's Ooh, the big know. question. I don't know if no, we can make that work out. I think maybe have it like I think for it to work, I think Myri should be off like finishing off the sigils while okay. someone get other people get that. Okay, so then we're gonna start. So we just did the engagement roll, Adam. Um, okay. CJ rolled two dice total, and she she let never me let me roll the dice again. Oh, why did, we think that, let, why did I think that was, let her roll why, dice? What are we? Why, why did I think that was roll? a good idea? Why did I think it was no. a good idea? Okay. No. And so we no, are starting in a. If you want to roll low, you give the dice to CJ. Otherwise, no. <laughs> yeah. She's so we are starting. We are starting by establishing where the three of you are. Um, so Myri's part of the plan. She's in the washroom. She's carving out runes on like this shower column um, to turn it into okay. a beacon for ghosts um, and cause chaos. That's where she's at. Um, Ludes, what are you up to? Like, where, like, what's your role in this plan? And Ethan, are you with him or are you separate? I like, I think like the other two is like, there's, there's someone standing guard and then there's someone else at solitary confinement. And, um, which position do you want? I feel very confident. I'm sorry. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, I feel like, I feel like I can get the door open, uh, but I, I don't know how well I'm going to be able to talk to this guy and, and get him on our side. But yeah, I can get the door open. Otherwise, you know, if you want, I can, <laughs> I can, I can, I can get, uh, it's easy for me to get out. I could just leave and see what's going on on the other side of the wall. I can just do that. You know, I just, I, I like you guys so much. I just, I don't want to leave without you. So I think from the sounds of it that um, I think I think I gotta go with Ludes and um, go talk to Bear and, and get him on our side. Okay, so the two of you were together, and so um, Myri, you're in um, um, which which bathroom? What floor do you want to be on when you're doing this? Um, what floor is solitary on? Because I don't want to. Or the solitary is on the third floor. Solitaire's on the third floor. We'd probably want to leave on the second story floor. I'd say do first floor. Okay. So you're you're maybe in the wing that you live in. Um, you, you've hit that 20 minute window. You're carving your runes. Um, you've managed to sneak in some arcane implements over the last three days. Um, and arcane implements or whatever you want them to be. Um, like... Uh, whatever you think you would use, but they're just like chalk and and this kind of occult stuff that you were using to make these runes. Um, and then the two of them are making their way up to the third story, and you guys are maybe waiting at the stairwell. You're waiting for some sort of thing to happen that's going to prove the distraction, hopefully remove some of the guards from that hallway so you can sneak by them. And um, Myri, um yes. You are starting a desperate position, which means that okay. something desperate, something desperately risky is about to happen to you. And so you are in the bathroom. You're about to finish this rune. Um, and um, you um, you hear someone kind of come in behind you as you're doing this. And you turn around and um, he doesn't see you right away. 
because he's using the washroom. And so he's like peeing into the toilet. Um, is this man in like this like huge ornate like red robe wearing like a lion's mask? Oh no. <laughs> and he's oh, urinating. No! And um, you see him and you go quiet and you hope that maybe he won't notice you. But as he goes to wash his hands, he turns and he makes eye contact with you. He sees what you're doing. He recognizes what you're doing. Oh, fuck. Fuck. <laughs> what do this you do? This is worse than the last time I was in the bathroom with the runes and someone came in. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, so at this point, um, you, you're going to just tell me what you do and we'll decide how we handle it. Um, but yeah, this is incredibly risky. A man who is specifically trained to recognize and fight the occult is recognizing exactly what you're about to do. This campaign's over. All right. <laughs> it was a great one. It was great knowing really you guys. Good. Oh my god. Why and I will say you new character dice. Sheet. <laughs> <laughs> oh. uh, yeah, hmm. Don't don't worry about your action rolls. What would what would my redo right now? Don't worry about what CJ would do. CJ would obviously shit herself because this is terrifying. <laughs> but Myrie's a badass. Yeah. What is she going to do? <laughs> what is she going to do? Like, All right. Even if, oh, Feel free to workshop it with the others. Like, absolutely. Like, that's a thing that oh, okay. this game encourages. Like, okay. what <laughs> what should Myrie do right now? Oh, well, God. Um, play it cool? Sounds like you got it. There's, yeah, there's the one. Guard. Play it cool. My <laughs> other thought is... Pretend I was possessed and just kind of pass out on the floor. No, 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 no. Oh no, no. Play it cool. Be like, oh, I'm just cleaning up this uh, graffiti. Oh yeah, it's like all oh, this nasty shit. You know what this? What they're trying to do with? It. I, I found this here, man. This. It was like this when I got here. That. It's, it's like that's my go-to at work. So. <laughs> like, well, oh, I've seen I've seen this in my, the seen stuff like this in my time of day. Like I'm trying to get rid of it. You know, you don't want these nasty stuffs popping up in here. I, man, these there was those crazy. Oh yeah, blame it on the what's it guys, the uh, cult Path people. Of no, Path of no, Echoes. No, 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 don't blame it on anybody. No, 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 <laughs> no. No, no, no. They got they got fucking meat hooks, man. What are you doing? No, no, you're talking about Path of Echoes. <laughs> Path of Echoes don't have weapons. Oh fuck them, fuck those guys. Yeah, I don't know those yeah. guys. Fuck them. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they're just like weird guys with tattoos walking around. Um, yeah, yeah, no, whatever. Here. Yeah, that sounds like what they would even do anyway, so. Fuck them. Yeah. Yeah. You Another don't know option, a lot of... if, okay. we're, if, if we're trying to go through and, you know, take this down and be a little more, more silent about things is, um, like, I do have, um, the ability to assist, which is kind of like going in and doing something, and so if we want, like, I don't know if that's possible to say, like, hey, the assist is that, like, you know, beforehand i talked to sawtooth and like you know maybe he's gonna come in right around that time and it kind of turns it from a one-on-one -on -one, which sounds maybe a little intimidating to more of a two-on-one -on -one, which provides at least a bit of distraction and maybe helps out on that role so yes i would say that that's a perfect use of an assist but we'll hold on to that assist until um myri makes her action roll Oh, um, yeah. When we're exactly. determining how many dice, that, that assist can definitely come in and that will help. So what is Myri doing? I'm I'm kind of leaning on the saying like, oh, I found this here. I'm trying to get rid of it. I don't okay. want those popping up on me while I'm taking a shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. And I'm going to look at the things here. That sounds like some sort of uh, maybe a sway um, roll. Um because you're lying to them, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, like what action role do you think this is? Uh, yeah, because that's the way that it works. I don't tell you what to roll. You tell me mm -hmm. what you want to roll, and then I set position and effect. So if you were like, I want to roll a rec roll to lie to this guy, I'm going to be like, cool, it has no effect, and it's a desperate risk. So, like, yeah. you can make the roll, and even if you succeed, nothing happens. Like, but I'll you tell you do, that before you, you make it. You can do wreck to like hide the runes, I suppose. That's but... that's that was like my thought maybe of just like wrecking it like so like so by the time he comes over it just looks like that stupid S thing people used to draw in their sketchbook or whatever. <laughs> the cool <laughs> S. <laughs> yeah. yeah, absolutely. Like just um, 
yeah, uh, just tell me what you're doing and um, what you want to roll, and we'll we'll figure out how many dice, your position, and effect, and we'll roll it. And of course, if anyone's going to assist or anything like that, we'll make sure that that gets up in that same time. So yeah, can I yeah? I guess then can I wreck to try to like quickly cover it up before he comes over and just looks like garbage? Yes. Yes, um, so I will say that this is desperate, okay? Like, because it has to be desperate because of the engagement role. Mm -hmm. This is the desperate thing that's about to happen. So the risk is desperate. The biz yes. uh, the effect is standard, okay? So um, it will do what you want it to do if you succeed. Okay. Um, I have an idea of what the consequence will be if you, if you fail. Part, a partial success and an and impartial success. Okay. Um, so I this actually works out well. Um, do, do, do. You can also push yourself. I was um, going to ask about that. There's push yourself and a devil's bargain. Yeah, um, I'll make a devil's bargain with you. If, <laughs> if you fail this roll, it will not work. Or you will take at least another hour or 20 minutes or whatever, however long... This 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 is taken. You'll have mm -hmm. to start over, and at that point, other people are going to be coming in, things like that. So, like you're you're going to lose this opportunity, and I'm going to leverage other consequences against you if you fail. Okay, and pushing it is too stress. Yes. Um, and you can increase effect or give yourself additional. Time. Um, I'll... and then, and then if. Ethan wants to to use his foresight assist action. He can. Um, I will say that any other kind of assist is very unlikely because you're not in the room. Um, mm -hmm. But the foresight it kind of is a little bit like he's making plans ahead of plans, you know. So that would make sense in this case. So I'll hold off on a devil's bargain for now, but I'll just I'll take the two stress to get an extra dice because okay. I don't. Two. No worries and. So that's three dice total you're rolling now. Um, and before we make that roll, is, is there anything else that you are looking at doing? If you click on the cruise sheet, there's other things that you can look up. Um, you could do a flashback um, or anything like that as well. But otherwise, we will um, we'll make that roll. Uh, sounds like we're ready to make the roll there, CJ. Roll your three dice and let's see what you get. Okay. Um, if you click on rec, it should pop oh, up rec. and then you okay. can add dice to it. Propos yeah. Oh, wow. That's a lot of ones, but it only matters what your highest dice was. So thankfully you Ooh. rolled a five. Uh, so that's a partial yeah, a success. It's a good thing you uh, rolled five die for that. <laughs> oh, wait. Yeah. How'd you get five die? Yeah. I, what? Yeah. We're only supposed to be rolling three, I believe. Uh, cause it's you cut oh, it's modifier. Cut the modifier. Cut them off. I gotta make you roll it one more time. I'm not as nice as that. No, no, no. The first die roll was a five. Let it ride. I didn't mean to call that out. I'm sorry. That's all right. We still four. got a partial hey, it's success. Four, it's okay. <laughs> okay. Still right, a partial four, success. Four, okay. right. um, and so, um, he approaches and, and you kind of mess it up. And, and you and you start talking about how like somebody was graffitiing around here. Um, maybe you just mutter under your breath. It's I think it's the path of echoes. Um, he looks it over, and um, he puts a hand on your shoulder, and with like way more force than you thought a man of his stature could muster, he pushes you to the floor. Okay. And um, he pulls out um like a sword, and he strikes it. And it cuts straight through this column that you were drawing on, and oh. it shatters. Holy wow. shit. <laughs> so this guy's um, like a titan or something. Holy shit. Um, and so you know that like he didn't like you still have like the bottom half of it. It wouldn't take you the whole 20 minutes to figure out a way to, to fix it and get it going. Um, but he also doesn't leave. Now you can resist these consequences. I, I I put two consequences as which is that he's staying until you leave and that it's been destroyed. But if you want to change the fiction by resisting the consequence, you can do that now. What does it do? I mean, 
Um, it makes it so the consequence didn't happen. So what the way a resistance roll works is you automatically take six stress. Oh, and then, shit, that's a lot. Yes. But then you roll one of your attributes. So um, in this case, it would be a prowess roll um, because you are resisting the consequence to a wreck, a failed wreck um, check. And so you would you make a prowess roll, which means in this case you'd be rolling two dice. You take the higher of the two dice and you subtract that number from six and you take that much stress. So you could take oh. anywhere from zero to five stress right now. Okay, that's not that bad. To make that consequence to not happen. Can she do it twice? No. Okay, fine. But you can use armor. Um, like, that's what armor's for. Then there's also special armor that you get. Uh, so you can pick one of those consequences to not have happen. There, CJ. If mm. you would like. Like a le- if, if my track record with ones continues, oh, I'm going to have two <laughs> stre- stress left. <laughs> Well, that's that's the game. Like Stress is a resource in, that you spend. Almost dead. <clears throat> well, get stressed. I feel like this is the one thing I have to do. Like everything else, that like that. This is my part of it. Is is there another approach? As like like right now, you're talking about how to undo a rule. Is like is 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 CJ in a spot? And I'm kind of asking because I'm trying to learn the rules right now. But yeah, like, it's, yeah, it's like, are is there other ways of branching the narrative? As far as like instead of going, no, yeah. actually this is there like you know, oh, okay, if that's the case, then well, we do this. So if she if she decides not to do this resistance roll, what we'll do next is we'll go to Lutes and Vey and see what they do when the bomb doesn't go off. Gotcha. And the, okay. and you guys will do what you're going to do then. Then we're going to go back to CJ, who's in a room with a man who caught her doing something pretty suspicious. Um, and also the bomb didn't go off. And so we'll, then she has the opportunity to do whatever she wants to do then. Right? Um, we can even, like, and, and it's one of those things where, like, we said that Ghost Ward is, like, a thing that takes a bit of time. You draw some runes. Maybe that's the safe way to do it. Maybe there's like a really dangerous way to do it. Ooh, I like that. That's a lot faster. Like we we haven't established what the fiction of Ghost Ward is yet, and so I'm open to all sorts of cool stuff happening. Ooh, you could okay. throw some blood in there to make it go off quicker. You know, uh, things like that. So um, maybe it's more volatile because you didn't do it the safe way, but we, like that's still an option. Um, but yeah, like so we'll decide if. CJ is going to be resisting any of these consequences. And then we're going to move to the other two. It's a tough decision. Adam feels yep. like the angel or maybe the devil on the one side of the shoulder. <laughs> kind of going. Something. Yes. Yeah. yeah. CJ, what are you thinking? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, CJ, and, and I guarantee you, like, you're not going to die. If you fill out your stress, you will still survive this, this whole mm-hmm. thing. Okay. Um, but it's definitely like you will not be able to make action rolls and stuff like that. So try not to max out your stress too early. Um, yeah. But yeah, like it might very well be worthwhile. This is a huge part of the plan. And and unfortunately, because of the poor engagement roll, this is a desperate situation. It can definitely get worse from here too. Yeah. Oh, great. <laughs> I'll I'll resist the guy being here. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So okay. So make your resistance roll. So it's prowess. No modifier. Um. Yeah. No. No modifier to it. Um. So it's. Oh, double five! Oh, thank you. Yeah. You're gonna five. take <laughs> one point of stress. And um. And so he's thrown you to the floor. He draws out this sword and he just like slices the column, uh, twice and then, like it slides off kind of beside you, um, onto the floor and he just glares down at you and you can't see his eyes because they're behind this mask. And he just nods, and he walks out of the washroom. And we, uh, we, we kind of, the camera flies out of the bathroom, and it kind of goes up, um, through the courtyard, and you see, um, like a group of adepts of, like, strange men, and they've got, like, their prison uniforms on, but they've torn open their shirts, and you can just see, like, tattoos all over their bodies, like these kind of arcane rune tattoos. They're milling about, and there's, like, a man in the center, 
walking like a monk with his like hands steepled in prayer. Um, and then we go through the window on the third floor um, stairwell and we see Vey and Ludes. Um, standing in the stairwell, they're waiting for the signal. The, she said it was going to be loud, but it's not happening. And maybe Vey, you're kind of keeping track of the time because you're really good at that. You're, you're good with your numbers. Um, and um, you go, it should have happened by now. What do you guys do? What are, we, what, are we, what are we doing? What do we do? What do we do then? I mean, if, if it was supposed to happen already and it hasn't happened yet, what do we? I, I, do we just go for it? Do we just go for it? What do you think? What do we do? Well, if if you ask me, I gotta say, um, usually when I'm working with other acquaintances, I say, you know, give them, uh, give them a little trust, give them a little faith. But um, you know, I'll what's, be what's, honest. What's, what's, what's it mean? What's it mean? Does it, does it mean we just go for it and we think that it's good, or do we wait? What do we do? Generally, I'd say wait, but um, I haven't known any of you for a particularly long time, so I don't know how much I can trust whether or not, you know, Myrie's going to get her job done or, you know, we're going to be able to get this job done. Um, well, let me just take a quick look. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, let's, so, let's, take, let's take a look. Let's take a look. Let's take a look. Uh, I want to put my head around. Your, oh, go ahead. Stack, yeah, up, you... stack up like, like Scooby-Doo <laughs> around the corner. Okay. Uh, you look. Um... You don't have to make a roll for this. Um, you're not in danger, yeah. just looking. Um, yeah, you see um, this hallway, and so you see that there's like a row of cells. There's maybe ten of them that you know that to be the solitary confinement. Um, there's a man standing with a rifle at the far end of the hallway. Um, he's one of the Iron Hook guards. They've got these kind of like uh, red kind of British soldier cloaks on with like the gold okay. tassels on their shoulders. Um, epaulets. So, All right. Yes, with the epaulets. Um, and you also see um, a second man and they're, they're just, um, he's walking around. He doesn't have a gun that you can see, but he's got like a, like a cudgel kind of, or a billy club at his side. Um, and they're talking to each other. I, uh, I think, uh, yeah, if we time this right, if we time <laughs> this gotta be just right. If we done this just right, I think I can get that guy's gun and uh, maybe shoot the other guy. <laughs> I'm not a good shot, but I, I, I'm pretty sure I can get the gun. I, you go with the gun? I can get the gun. I can get the gun to you. Um. So at, at, I'm going to say at this point, when uh, Ludwig is talking about grabbing the gun, they will um, lift up one eyebrow, um, really liking the fact that he is not the one that is being volunteered to go after the person with the ranged ability <laughs> and um, seeing how Ludwig is kind of throwing himself out forward. And so um, I'm going to say, tell you what, why don't we, why don't we wait a minute or two you know we got we got about 20 minutes total you know five's eight's gone by you know we've got still another 12 i'd say we're we're gonna wait another two and then at that point we'll um we'll give them the old rochambeau um i go low you go high and um yeah i think i can i think i can take the man with the cudgel I gotta, I gotta tell you, you threw out a lot of numbers there. <laughs> That's not my thing, man. I don't know. I don't know what the hell you're talking about. But I can, I can get the gun. I think I can get the gun. And, uh, and uh, maybe, maybe, <laughs> uh, maybe I shoot the other guy. Maybe you get the gun. Yeah. You know what? You just say. You know what? Just tell me. Just tell me when, and we'll go for it. I think I can get the guy's gun. When I tell you, when I tell you when, you grab the gun, and then yeah. I'll make sure to handle the other man. If um, if I'm having issues, you throw me the gun, and we'll be golden. I like that. I, I think we can do that. All right, all right, let's go. And uh, I start to go for it. Okay. Um, so, um, what? Do you, how are you going for it? What does it look like when you um, cross this hallway? It's probably at least uh, thirty feet. Uh, okay. 30, um, Forty feet long. Are they in like a setup where I would have uh, the ability to sneak up on them, or do I need to get special with my sneaky? Um, the, they're talking to each other. Okay, so they might be distracted, but um, it, it is a, just a narrow hallway. With the guy with the gun is is like his whole job is to stand at the end of the hallway and and make sure that nobody comes in. Okay, so 
like my thought is this i've i've got prowl which i believe is the right thing to use here um if it's a situation where they're not like clearly looking at me i feel confident that i'll be able to sneak up on them if it is a situation where they are clearly looking at me i can get super invisible i, I will say this um but the desperate action has been taken care of but I will set the risk at desperate if you just try to sneak up on these guys like in the hallway um, because okay. like the one guy is kind of facing towards you even though he's talking to his buddy okay so um, like one guy's, back is, to me. One guy's yeah. back is to me the other guy is like looking at him talking yeah and, and if you get okay. close enough to take the gun from him he's holding the gun like in his hand oh yeah I've got so, plans for that Oh, oh, you were telling me for foresight you want me to wait until we're doing the dice roll. So I will yes. wait. Okay, yes. so I'm going to use my special ability, which is uh, actually what it's called here is a special ability called the Ghost Veil. Ooh. It says, I may shift partially into the ghost field, becoming shadowy and insubstantial for a few moments. Take two stress when you shift, plus one stress for each extra feature. I've got the options for extra features, which are... It lasts a few minutes rather than moments. I, I, do you think a few moments is enough for me to get up to this guy? Yeah, yeah. Moments okay, so is kind of to... one of the, those things where it's like, if you want to get from one side of the room to the other, like that's, okay, that's so, moments. All right, so that's covered. I don't need to enhance that. I can become invisible instead of shadowy uh, for an extra stress, or I may float through the air like a ghost, which uh, with the ability to become invisible and float through the air like a ghost, I feel like I could just leave whenever the fuck I want. <laughs> but I have decided not to because it's, uh, I've got reasons. There are reasons. Look, in here, I got a bed. I get food. I'm not out on the streets. So maybe it's not that bad. But these guys are talking about maybe fucking killing me. I don't, I gotta get it. I gotta get out of here now. So um, I think I can go and use the two stress and then a third one to become invisible. Okay. Um, so you become invisible. So I will set the, <clears throat> the risk of this to be hmm, risky or controlled i'm gonna say it's risky i'm sorry but you are trying to take a gun from someone who's currently sure. holding a loaded gun um and there's another man standing beside him but i think that that's the, the best you could get like you know what i mean like in this particular sure. circumstance um but i will set the effect at great um sounds like great is, to me this is going to be awesome and potentially devastating depending on what you're doing how do i um, count i can't count up my stress it's not letting me um are you, have you to go out? from the left side you have to do it from left yeah you uh, click to the the level you're at i'm trying that but it's not changing are you popped out because i don't uh, think i was and then i popped back in let me let me reopen my character sheet and see if i can do it this way yeah it won't let me i click on it, it doesn't change my stress maybe let me turn off that lock yeah, it won't let me change my. Str oh, there it goes. Okay. Yeah, well, I well, I just clicked it, so that's. It's weird. Uh, that's maybe something there's something wrong with my character. She's not letting me make changes. I don't know. I'm gonna configure your ownership. Track. You should. Oh, nobody owns it. That's why. Oh well, there you go. Um. Okay. Uh, Technical nope. difficulties. Please stand by. Okay. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Try closing it and reopening it. Okay. Now we're open and. Uh, let me get rid of that thing and do this thing. No, still no control over it. Bizarre. Okay, we'll we'll troubleshoot that a little bit. Yeah, we'll deal with it later. But... We'll deal with it yeah. later. So three stress added uh, makes it so I am invisible. Mm -hmm. And then I, what do I need to do? I need to roll uh, my prowl. Is that right? Um, yeah. Like, well, you always tell me. So, um, what are what are well, you prowl, doing and what are you I think rolling? What I'm trying to do. I'm trying to sneak up on these guys. Okay. Oh, but look at finesse. Finesse has to do with dexterous manipulation or subtle misdirection. It's true, but Prowl is traverse skillfully and quietly. Oh, yeah. That's so fair. I feel like That's I'm fair. trying to Prowl and yeah. then Finesse. Yeah. Maybe. And, and and to be fair, I'm not going to make you roll twice, right? Like it's all kind of okay. one action. It's, it's so, the same pull either way. It's still, it's two yeah. either way. Yeah. And so we, we'll start with uh, the two dice pool there. Um, are you going to push yourself? Um, Hmm. So you said it's great effect, and my position is desperate or risky? Risky. 
Okay. Oh, also, CJ, um, b yeah. before I forget, because you made a desperate roll in a, in a desperate rec oh, roll, right. mark one experience in prowess. Cool. Yeah. Okay, so I don't put anything in for the modifier, correct? Um, Unless you want to push yourself. I don't have a devil's what mark for you today. What does pushing um, myself do? So it gives you either increased effect, um, which in this case would be like a critical effect. And basically, you would just fucking kill the guy right now. Um, or if you succeed, um, or, um, you, um, can, um, give yourself an additional dice to make it more likely to succeed at the cost of two stress. Uh, yeah, let's do that. I'm going to do that. I'm going to push. So I'm going to get the okay. extra die. All right. And here we go. All right. Ooh. Oh, yes. Yeah, CX. Do you do? Five, Five, success, six, you do it. Okay, so you do exactly what you set out to do. I don't have to levy a consequence against you. Um, so what do you do? You're, you're right, sneaking, so, you're prowling. Yeah, so I get in there, and like while these guys are talking, I'm sneaking up behind the guy with the gun. His back is towards me, and the guy with the uh, the billy club is is towards facing towards me, talking to the other guy. And I sneak up, and I'm invisible. And by the way, the whole time, my guy goes... <sighs> It holds his breath the whole time as he sneaks up and becomes invisible. You see him just like fade away, like back to the future. He just fades away and he sneaks up on the guy. No one sees him at all. No one can. Not even the camera. He's just invisible. You see maybe like some uh, some like footprints and some dust on the ground or something as he's sneaking up on the guy. And I get behind him and he's got his gun and like he cocks it up over his shoulder for a little bit. And then he somehow happens to drop it. And he's like, what? And I grab it. And um, is it now? Tell me if I'm going too far. Can I cold cock the dude with it? Um, I'm going to say you can take the gun. OK. And he's not going to he's going to be so surprised he doesn't retaliate. OK, so I'm going to take the, So it, he cocks the gun up over his shoulder and I'm going to I'm going to grab it in a way that I fling it back and launch it back in the direction from whence I came in a way that it looks possibly like maybe he dropped it and it was a hell of a drop and slides across the ground towards where my pal is. All right. And and then we go to bay. A gun slides like just kind of right in front of that opening on the stairwell. Oh, man, this is perfect. I love this. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right. Uh, Vey is absolutely going to, gonna you know, take some pretty confident steps forward, pick up the gun, and um, cocking it, hold it up, and um, command the, the the two guards to um, uh, get on the ground. Okay. Um, and so you're, um, I will say that this is a controlled position. You're holding a gun. Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. <laughs> um, but I'm going to say it's limited effect. These are trained men. Um, they are wearing body armor. They don't know if you're well trained or not in guns, and they're a little bit scared. So there, there's a little bit of like they might react poorly, like even in their own favor because fight, flight, or freeze, you know. Um, and so, yeah, I'm gonna say it's limited effect right now. Um, now, because you two are in the same room, Adam's character could assist um, at the cost of one stress um, in some way. Um, you could push yourself to increase the effect or to increase the um, um, the amount of dice you roll. You say I can get one stress to, to assist? To assist, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to do it. Absolutely. Okay. And what does it look like when you assist, just for fun? I'm going to use my finesse to snatch the guy's baton. Okay. Yeah, and and, and so, yeah, you... you um, maybe even just appear or um, the moments are over. So you appear um, and suddenly you're right beside them just after this gun has been thrown away and you got your hand on the baton and then a man comes around the corner leveling the gun at them. Um, and so you get an additional die there, Ethan. Um, and you can still choose to push yourself as well. Um, I will. I'm, I'm looking for like a critical success on this one. Vey is all about doing things to perfection. Okay, um, so, um, in that case, are you you are you pushing up the effect, or are you giving yourself more dice? Oh, interesting. Because um, right now you're at limited effect. 
it's um up the effects yeah um and what that means in this circumstance just so you can kind of get an idea of what's going on with the gm side of it um there's two guys here if you succeed at limited effect one of them's gonna listen and the other one's gonna panic Got it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I would definitely up the up the effect to a standard then, and try to intimidate both of these guards. Okay. Um, so roll your dice with a plus one from Adam's intervention. Yep. Perfect. Partial success. Okay. Um, you have reduce effect. You suffer lesser harm, or you end up in a risky position. Hmm. Ooh, can oh, we can do. we choose? Um, generally, <clears throat> I choose. But okay. if you have a pitch for what you think it should be, let me know. I think the risky position. That's what I was thinking too, actually. Hell yeah! Uh, I think that's more exciting. That's that's a cool option. Yeah, and so what I'm gonna do for this risky position is, yeah, they they put their hands up, um, and they stand against the wall. Um, they just got their hands kind of in front of them. Um, and they look at you, and and they kind of look at each other. Um, you have them kind of where you need them to be right now, but you don't have anything to like tie them up with. Yeah, fuck yeah, dude, I love it, I love it. And so they're loose. Um, and so that's what I'll say happened there. I'll even call that a minor complication, as you realize you don't really know what to do with them now. And we go back to Myri in the bathroom the the spirit warden um just kind of threw you to the ground and and he left but he destroyed your hard work guess i'm at it again working on making a new one okay be um yeah so you um you take some time and you kind of just quickly rush and like maybe now you're just scrawling on the floor like you're working from the the, the top down mm. instead of um and so, um, yeah, let's make an action roll to see if you do it fast enough. Um, that's kind of where we're at. So it'll be control position, whatever, and at this point. So you're not in as much danger as you were before. But um, you want to make sure that you do it right and that you do it fast enough. Yeah. And um, so, yeah, you can roll wreck. Um, I'd even let you roll a tuner or something like that if you'd like. But better wondering Four. if you want to add anything to this yeah and and ethan if you wanted to use one of your assists now you could um but you don't have to by any means um yeah um so uh, to add something to it um or options here um group action wouldn't really make sense but um yeah you could push yourself um and, and I'll actually add a devil's bargain. I'm going to say that no matter how you roll, it's going off. <laughs> um, so if you accept the devil's bargain, it'll work. It'll definitely work. Um, the problem is, is now you're in a room where every ghost in the vicinity immediately wants to be. That milkshake. It's and all the we're gonna all the ghosts. Yeah. And um, <laughs> basically, what that'll be is I will start a clock. Um, and I'm gonna I'm gonna start a four section clock, and I'm gonna fill three segments of it. And you have until that clock fills to get out of the room. Let's do it. Oh! Okay. <laughs> oh! I want that thing to go off. Gold. <laughs> all right. That's so... one stress, right? Or is it no stress? Uh, for the Devil's Bargain? No stress? Yes. Take your extra I'm guy. pretty stressed. <laughs> Wreck. Uh, one extra die. Position is controlled. Effect. Do you need effect. another die? That That is my question at the moment. Do you do you think you're going to need another die? Um, there is always got, foresight. I've got three die. <laughs> is that enough? <laughs> mm. It could be. <laughs> <laughs> I feel pretty good. I, three dice. I feel pretty good about three dice. You got to get at okay. least a five on there. At least on three dice. You have to. That's just probability. That's how that works. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's just probably. What's the effect? Um, so I'm, yeah. Um, 
Actually, I'm going to say it's great effect. I'm going to say it's great effect because I, I gave it the Devil's Spark and it's going to work. Okay. Um, and to be honest, I don't know if um, in the fix you've ever done this before. Um, and so you maybe almost made it too powerful. Roll. Uh, yeah. Got you got the, the partial fun. success. Okay. So with the partial success... Um, do, do, do. Yeah, you, um, you quickly do this and, um, I'm going to introduce something. You can totally just say no, um, by the way, um, CJ, like if you want, yeah. you can, you can no butt me on this, but, um, you realize you're running out of time. And so you reach into this bag of like, um, reagents that you got and you pull out something called void salt. And it, ever since the cataclysm, the sea has turned into this like inky black mess with like stars. Like you can, like you don't see stars in the sky anymore, but you can see them in the ocean. Mm. And when you distill salt from the ocean, it's black now. But it's also mm. like sharp, like glass. What the and, fuck kind of hellscape are we living in? <laughs> and so you have like a like a little bag of this. You put it in your hand. You rub them together, you get a little bit of blood going, and you finish the runes in your own blood. No harm or anything. But that's what that's one way of, of painting runes very quickly, and it increases the effect of things like this. I don't know how you feel about that, but that was just something I thought of this week. That's pretty metal. Uh, yeah, that's that's pretty metal. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. Yeah. So like, yeah, you I, I say like yeah, do that, and then like kind of like smear the rune when if that bl salty blood mu mess. Yeah, and um, so yeah, you finish painting this rune, and um, the room like explodes in like this like blue light, and like it just like shines straight up into the sky, like a beacon, and you hear like these screams like kind of coming towards you. And you, and uh, presumably you're going to run. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Maybe There's a, a little. stage left. <laughs> <laughs> and so Maybe we're gonna little. end you in a risky position. The risky position is is that as you open the door and leave, um, there's now two spirit wardens standing outside, but they move past you into the washroom. So oh, they God. like kind of like push past you, and so. We're going to leave you there, but you're in a position where there are ghosts coming. There are two spirit wardens in the vicinity, and you are in a risky position um, because they're probably going to put the connection together pretty quickly. It feels good. And we go, <laughs> and we go to um, we go up to Vey and Ludes and um, Vey, you're standing there. You've got like a like a long like English ensign right type rifle pointed at these two men all right well i um so pointing the rifle i'm gonna look at them i'm gonna look over to ludes and it's like all right ludes i need you to grab the keys and uh yeah. i kind of yeah, move I the head that. over I got, I got that. yeah yeah and, and and um the one that was holding um the cudgel um he looks a little younger than the other guy um he just hands you the keys all right. Um, uh, so no roll, I guess. Today. Not for this. Um, I, there's only a roll if it's dangerous. Yeah, gotcha. Right? So uh, I'll take the keys. Go. Hey, hey, uh, thank you. Uh, which, uh, <laughs> which one? <laughs> I want to open this one with the big guy inside. The guy that punched you in the face yesterday. <laughs> that one. Oh fuck. Um, was, I guess you're talking about the. the fucking big pirate guy at a bear bear is his name i think which fucking bear key is it tell me or i'm <laughs> i'm gonna lose my uh, temper um okay now i'm gonna make you roll um <laughs> i'm gonna make you roll a sway or something like that sorry i don't tell you what to roll i gotta get, catch me on that um uh, you're i guess command maybe sure. or sway yeah. it doesn't it doesn't matter either way it's shit yeah, and, and and so I'll say that this is controlled for standard effect. Um, okay. What the the risk 
here is that he's gonna not his hands are shaking he's gonna hand you the wrong key he's gonna give you bad information he's gonna make you take longer oh not that bad i got a five and a six here so that counts as a five i believe no you got a five and a six so you got a six but this is a this is out oh of, uh, right right zero, yeah. so out of zero. The lower roll. okay so you got a partial success uh yeah he he holds up the key um and 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 he with shaky hands he drops them and it takes a little longer than you want. Um, and what I'm doing, and you'll see them on the crew sheet, I'm starting another clock. This is another four segment clock. Um, Where are these? I don't see any uh, on this crew sheet. Um, on the far left, there's- Oh, I see it like... over there now. Okay, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, and if you hover, I think you can see the name, but um, either way, um, this is a four segment clock called Someone Shows Up. Uh, it's not giving me the the name when I hover over. So you got to right click on it, and you can okay, set um, hover over uh, or name hover over anyone. Okay, we'll Everyone. do that. Do that. Okay. But the okay. second clock there is your clock. The first one okay. is Myri's clock. I see. Um, and so I will set that. Uh, so the two of you are there, um, but um, Vey, you probably caught which one he was trying to hold up. Um, it looks like it's a key that'll fit any of these doors. Um, do, 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 do. Um, you can tell that the that the one that was holding the gun before is is really like mad dogging you. He's giving Me? you. Um, Probably no, May. <laughs> With okay, the gun. Yeah. Um, because Vey is standing there, he's in, on the gun, and, and it, you can tell that he's getting antsy. Um, he clearly is trying to think of a plan. All right. Um, oh, this is a crossroads, so I'm, I'm... Yeah. I'm trying to think as far as whether or not this is one of those, like, do you hit the guards out and just kind of knock them down, or if this is, like, you know, we can get the bloody door open in time and, and throw them in and, and pull bear no. out. So. And, and, and we're not in initiative order. This isn't Dungeons and Dragons. So like, <laughs> if you want to say like, like you kick those, the keys over to Ludes and point out which one it is and let him hold the door while you're in the thing. We're just in the fiction. I'm describing what's happening. That's fair. Yeah. Maybe I'm, I'm, I'm think I, I think of these too granular. Um, that's okay. In, that's, so. that's, that's part of the learning curve with blades in the dark is you gotta, you got to step out. Sometimes we go really fast through the action. Sometimes it slows right down because you're fighting a dude. Right? All right. So, um, Vey's going to nod over to, to Lutz and uh, tell him to grab that cudgel real quick. And at the same time is going to um, pick up the keys while being pretty locked on to both of these officers with the gun. And um, he's going to, gun in hand, Grab the keys, flip over to the right one, and and, and hand that over to to Ludes. Uh, okay. And so Ludes, okay, yeah. you you open up the um, the room that has Bear in it. Um, there's other people up here um, that aren't Bear. Um, in the room? No, in in, in okay. the rooms. There's like ten cells, okay. five on each side. All the different room. solitaries. Um, yeah. It wouldn't be solitary if there's multiple people in there, would it? That's a stupid question. Hey, hey. so okay, so Bear is in there. So I guess I wanna I wanna open his cell, specifically him. Yeah. And I'm sure they got they got the little bean slot that opens up. I would imagine, so I can like <laughs> peer in and make sure. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You kind of go okay. to a couple, and you see like an old an, an older man. You go to another one. You see um, one of the path of echoes adepts, and, and he's just kind of chanting. All right, you close that. Hey, real quick. keep it down. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Shut up in there with that weird shit. But the third or fourth one, you open, and yeah, you see this, like, um, he's a little bit rotund, but he's huge. Um, and and um, he's got his, like, he's, like, handcuffed to the bed. Okay. I go, hey, uh, hey, big guy. You want out of there? Oh, fuck, yeah, I do. Yeah, I want out of here. That's, uh... <laughs> I figured, you like to fight guards, huh? Huh? Ugh. It's just fucking disgusting what they do here. Hey, check this out. <laughs> I, got, I got the keys. 
Ah, I'm gonna let you out of here. And I'm gonna open the door. And he's he's chained to the thing. Uh, does it look like I've got the right kind of key for the whatever's locking him to the to the bed? You can maybe give roll. him the cudgel too. How, you, I'm getting there. Make, uh, I'm just get him on our side first. Get him on our side first. Um, so on the exactly. on the far the left, weapon. at the very bottom, there's a there's a thing that says dice roll. Okay. Or um, like there's a picture of dice. You click it. Um, so this is the simple roll. You are tier zero, so your fortune roll is 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 zero dice. Um, and there's not really a way to make this up, but you're gonna make a fortune roll. So click that and then just click roll. Uh, so a D6? Uh, two, it'll be 2D6, take the lower. Gotcha, okay. So bam, bam, 2D6, take the lower. Four, you four. is my lower. You got it, but um, you got it, but it's going to take you a moment. Okay. okay, so I'm, I'm fumbling through the keys, and I'm like, <laughs> I got uh, maybe maybe one of these guys. It looks like yeah. this. Uh, this might do it. And while, here, uh... and while you're fumbling through the keys, uh, Bay's got the gun trained on the other guy. The the one of them just seems completely cowed, but the other one is getting braver by the second. And we go back to Myri, um, two spirit wardens, the one with the red cape and the lion mask, um, and like another woman in like an all black leather. Um, like skin tight trinity coat um, wearing a crow's mask um, and as she walks by you like the feathers kind of fly off of like um, of the mask and they like turn to ash in front of your face um, and they see what's happening and you can you they're not speaking but you can hear them like doing something in there they're like dragging metal against the stone floor um and you know that you won't like you have maybe seconds to get out of here. Okay. So where are you going? Um. I don't think we've discussed this yet. <laughs> no, and 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 to be honest, I'm putting it. I'm putting it on CJ. Mm -hmm. To she's <laughs> gonna be the first one to make it to the exit point, probably. I'd say we we already discussed that the second story is obviously the be better choice of getting out because yeah yeah yeah, yeah. we, we yeah, talked about they're on the third floor I'm on the first floor so meeting in the sec on the second floor probably on who's ever cell is on the second story which is uh vase vase so yeah that's what we're probably gonna meet um I would like to say for my getaway can I have done a flashback where knowing Ooh. I'd have to book it out of here with this thing going off and people are rushing in, uh, I would have ahead of time planted like a robe or just like some blanket thing that I could throw over myself to make me a little easier to disguise so I could run into like the freaked out crowd and then kind of like backtrack around to the cell. Yeah, absolutely. Like a, um, like I would say that... Toga? Yeah. <laughs> nice. Oh, makeshift cloak. Um, yeah, absolutely. Um, so <laughs> it's a toga with a with a teenage mutant ninja turtles bed sheets. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Um, and so I'll do that for one stress. You you can you can acquire that asset right now. Okay. Actually, no. I'm gonna do it for no stress, and I'm gonna tell you why. Because we never went over loadout, but I'm I'm sure that there is something on your loadout that would work for that like a disguise or um i'm just kind of looking through Where's we God? don't really have an access to a lot of stuff in prison right now but no. a bed sheet's pretty doable <laughs> yeah i'm gonna okay. say um yeah you, you you would have access to like a bed sheet or even a cloak or something like that that you've that I've had access to just mm -hmm. mark off one load of something that you probably won't use. Um, um, and so, so that right now you're carrying two load, um, which is fine. Um, that's like, even if you took a light load, um, we can get into that on the next score. For this one, I'm assuming you're more or less acquiring stuff as you go. Um, but do keep track of your load because the more load you're carrying, well, 
well, you don't, but um, also, like, it, it, like the more stuff you're carrying, the more obvious it is, and the more attention people are going to pay to you. Um, right now, you're not really standing out, except that you're in the middle of doing, like, some crazy shit. Um, but, yes, you manage to, um, you're making your way up to the second story. Um, as you do, you hear, like, commotion coming from different parts of the prison. Um, you see, like, uh, five or six of these billhook guys, like, kind of storm past you as you're maybe making your way up the stairs. Um, you, you turn, you go up the stairway, and, like, looking, the camera's looking behind you, and you see five of these guys, and they're sprinting. Um, you hear the sound of gunshots off in the distance. Um... You, um, you can feel like that oppressive aura of spirits as they're just kind of filling the prison. Um, things are, are definitely getting risky. And as you get to the top of the stairs, um, you see a guard. Um, because you are in a risky position, I gotta make something happen to you. Uh, so there's, there's guards there, and um, he's shoving people into cells. And he turns to you and he says, Prisoner, get back in your cell. Oh, so I'm looking through with my things, what can I do? Hit him. Well, I I always say start with what you're gonna do, and we'll decide what the action role is after. Yeah, because we're telling a story. That's the goal. Mm -hmm, we're mm -hmm. telling a story before we're rolling. Well, but... is it like is it like gendered the floors? So can I say I'm going back to my? They're they're not gendered, and and to be honest, like you're fairly new in the prison. He may not know you well. To be honest, that kind of stuff would be dependent on how well you roll. Um, so yeah, if you wanted to lie your way through it, or um, he's pretty busy, you might be able to like kind of just finesse my way out of there. Yeah, maybe. Like maybe you just like duke out from underneath him and just keep running, right? Because um, uh -huh. he's got like um, probably like a dozen people that he's trying to get into cells, and only like a third of them are complying. Okay. Hey, you employ a manipulative subtle misdirection. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so... You're, yes, you're, yeah, you're gonna... Running around through the crowds, kind of bobbing, weaving through them, like... Yeah. Like, oh, you can't really keep track of them. And maybe steal his watch while you're at it, you know? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, with finesse, get, roll really good, take something from him. Yeah. Um, so I'm gonna set the position at Risky. Um, definitely there's a lot of risk going on here. It's, it's a very tense situation. There's only one guard, but, um, again, he is armed. Um, and, and you're not necessarily. Um, and even if you were, you're not the best fighter. In them. Um, so yeah, um, make your finesse roll. You can push yourself. I don't have a devil's bargain for you this time. Okay. Um, this might also be a moment for Ethan's foresight to come in, if he so wishes. Would you like an extra die? I was gonna, I was gonna say, do you so wish, or like, are you willing to give up a die, or are you gonna want me to take two more stress? Oh, like absolutely, like like. And you can actually do both. Like you can do take more two more stress and take that extra die. You can take the assist and get that extra die as well. So, um, yeah. So Ethan, um. In this moment, what have you done before now to to, to help my re out? Yeah, so um, beforehand, um, yesterday when we were kind of talking about the plan and, and how we were going to go about this job, um, they had gone and through um, kind of walking through the prison over the past few days had uh, mapped out kind of what the actual um, routes were going to be between the different points that, that we were going to action on. And so um, I think that the, the advantage that that Faye is given is um, Myri has like a really good sense as far as, you know, um, you know, what the, the, the bars are like, you know, like being on the, the second floor, there's kind of different handrails and like, like what that setup is and has a decent sense as far as like, you know, how wide the actual um, corridors are like for where those cells are. So so Myri is kind of going in with a really good sense as far as like, you know, there's actually not that much room when there's three people kind of crossing over at the same time. And so Myri is going to be able to kind of go in when 
um, multiple people are kind of walking past and it's going to be kind of a really hard fit. And so I think that is what allows for an extra die. Yeah, for sure. Like you kind of wait for the right moment and you think back to when Faye was kind of explaining like, hey, um, and um, yeah, let's get that roll there. The nest roll, right? Um, with an additional die from Ethan. And um, if you would like to push. Oh, yeah, I got to set the. Um, so it is risky for standard effect. Um, you succeed and you will be able to get past it. Not. Oh, you're uh, cutting out there. Sorry. Uh, I will not be pushing it. I'm going to hope that one die will be enough. So they said risk. Standard. Well, it should be two die, right? Because you got the assist from Ethan. The bonus. Oh, okay. Ooh, six. Oh, 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 oh. Actually, scars, it's a critical baby. success. So this it was is double great. The... <laughs> this is a great effect. This is the first critical I've ever actually had happen while Woo! I'm playing in the dark. Um, Yo, hell and yeah, so dude. You were at standard effect. This is now great effect. Describe to me how you finesse so hard that even more than what you thought was going to happen. You did more than just get past this guy. Ooh. We said we wanted to bring other people with. Can I see that lady who was in the cell with me and be and just kind of like, just like grab her wrist and be like, no, we got to get back to our cell and like kind of like drag her with me so it looks like we're trying to get back to our cell together. Yeah, I'll, I'll say yes. Fuck yeah. So fuck yeah. Um, uh, Elise um was kind of loitering outside the bathroom and when she saw you running, she was actually running behind you. And so when the guy turned to you, you didn't realize Elise was there. But um, you see her now and you just grab her wrist and the two of you kind of manage to juke just as this guy's getting kind of swarmed by like four or five guys um, who are not super keen on going into their thing. And he's completely distracted. He doesn't even care that you're running past him at this point. And you make it to the cell with Elise in tow. Hell and yeah. um Hell yeah. She kind of, you, you hear her like panting and her eyes are wide. She seems scared, um, but she's trying her best to put on a brave face. And she says to you, uh, th thank, thank you. Thank you. No, oh, don't you worry about it. Today is going to be a lucky day. She's like, she, she, she's got a wild look at her eyes. She's like, holy shit, I did that. And she's just like, I got like <laughs> all those adrenaline. I'm just like, ah. yeah. Um, she is unsure if she is scared or kind of like trying to match her energy. So she just kind of half-heartedly smiles at you. And she's like, uh, I don't know if today's lucky. I don't know if you saw what was going on down there, but um, fuck, people are dying. Oh, shit. <laughs> um, yeah. Oh, well, they got in prison. Uh, can't, 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 can't win them all. These things happen. If you say so. Um, and we just uh, leave them. They're waiting in the cell. So the two of you are working to free bear. You're holding these men at bay. Um, I'm going to say that... Um, um, Lutz, make a, make a roll to see if you can get this lock undone quickly enough. Finesse. Um, before yeah. something happens. Yep, uh, finesse would be a perfect one for that. Okay, uh, what do I got? Uh, risky, uh, controlled. Um, no, this this is risky, and it's because okay. things are heating up in the prison. Okay, there's nothing you guys did. Things are happening in the prison at this point. Um, guards are moving. Other factions are moving. Six, baby. Yeah. Ooh. Um, you know what? You say fuck it, and you just throw the keys to the ground, and you um. You kind of like pull out like a little like piece of metal that you file down and you just shove it into the, the handcuff locks and it comes undone. Uh, I was keeping that in the prison pocket. So I'm like, I'm like these keys, I can't figure out which key I'm supposed to be using. Yeah, let, me, let me just, uh, <laughs> don't mind the smell. And then I just jimmy it in there and like pop it open. And, uh, uh and yeah, there, bear, there we go. He stretches his hands and um, you're offering him the cudgel. Yeah, I go, uh, <laughs> how would you like to uh, have this beater here for uh, your friends outside? 
Hey, yeah, that's good. Um, and he takes it. Um, and yeah, he, uh, the two of you kind of go into the hallway. Um, he looks to you to see what you want to do with the cards. Hey, I, I, I got this. I got this idea. We're gonna. We're we're trying to. We're gonna. We're gonna break out of the joint. And uh, I feel like uh, you know a fella like you might wanna, you know, uh, stretch your legs a little bit. This place seems a little small for you. If you know what I mean. And uh, uh, there's some guys outside here. They're uh, they're, they're kind of you know giving my friend uh, some weird vibes. Maybe uh, uh maybe you know him. Huh? Maybe you uh, maybe you want to say hello. Huh? <laughs> Nice of you two to join the potty. Um, let's say we uh, deal with potty. these two, and <laughs> I'm I don't know. Potty. Yeah, I don't know, Bear. If you if you, if you want to knock him out, but let's say you got about ten <laughs> seconds, and then we got to beat it out of here. Okay, I'm gonna make a fortune roll for Bear, just to see how quick he does it. Uh yeah, it takes him a minute. He gets a little too into it. Uh, he's, he beats the one guy, he hits him across the face, he goes unconscious, but the one guy, um, he's got that black guy, that was the guard he was fighting the other day. And and he just, he hits him once, oh. and the guy goes unconscious, and then he hits him like four or five more times. Um, I get that, I gotta got tell you, I think you got him. <laughs> um, yeah. it's, uh, it's time to get out of here, I got, I got a hot tip, we got a thing on the second floor, we got some window we can get out of here. And, uh, I think yeah. uh, I think we can do this. I think we can do this. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You talk like a lot. Uh, just tell me where you're going, and I'll follow you. Uh. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, get, I talk a lot. <laughs> I'm a little bit nervous. I just got. All right, we're gonna go. We're gonna go down to the second floor. I get the. Uh, what the? Where are we going? Left side, right side, top side, left side, downside. Excuse me, chatty south? friend over here. Um, let's. Uh, we we walk back over to my cell. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it, as quick as we can. Uh, it sounds like there is guards going on and, and throwing yeah. down, but uh... yeah. And so um, the three of you are moving through the third story, and as you do, um, like you you're, you hit the stairs, and like you know that the third story is generally reserved for um, for like maximum security, and so. Um, which is why Tarvel's there. The reason why you're there is because Tarvel picked you to be his roommate. There, Lutz. I got, uh, uh <laughs> I got a pretty face. I got soft hands. <laughs> and, uh, there's other reasons they haven't come up yet why, <laughs> why he might want me as a roommate. I got, uh, I don't want to talk about it. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, you, you kind of, you hear sounds of fighting down there and as you go to the stairs you hear sounds of fighting and gunshots ringing through the the stone the narrow stone stairwell as you the three of you make your way down there um do, do, do. what do we want to do here um i'm gonna say you guys make it to the window so you are there um yeah you're there you got bear you got um you got elise is uh, Sawtooth there? It Sawtooth is his cell. <laughs> no, well, that's true. Um, yeah. But Sawtooth, Sawtooth is not there, but you can hear him <laughs> um, off in the distance. <laughs> and he's just like, where the fuck is my ether? Get out of here. Stop fucking touching me. <laughs> um, and, and like, yeah, you can hear him. He's just up the hall. Well... I don't know if he's going to be making it with us, but I can tell Sawtooth is in his happy place, which is about as much as I can ask for him. <laughs> his happy place is looking for ether. I think his happy place would be having ether. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, you got Bear there. Um, did anyone think to grab something to use as leverage for the window? We got this baton. All right. Um, or okay. the, the rifle shit okay um i'm gonna have you guys make a group action okay um and so what that is is all of you are gonna make the same kind of roll to get this window off um the the, the leader or the person who succeeds is the leader of the action um and you're going to get an additional two dice to this roll because you have two cohorts helping you right now. 
So between the the, the five of you, you're, you're kind of getting this window down one way or the other. And it's so gotta be wreck. it's got to be wrecking. It's got to be usage. Oh, boy. <laughs> yeah. So, well, actually, everyone is going to roll wreck. And anyone who succeeds can declare themselves the leader. And what that does is that anyone who fails, um, it gives that person a point of stress as opposed to ruining the action. Okay. I've got... Are I've got you risky? Go risky? Standard? What are we doing? It's got to be risky. Um, yeah, this is risky. This is definitely risky. Um... I'm going to say it's risky for standard effect. You're going to be able to get the, the bars we, off the window. Do we get the... the oh, we, we bought stress me out. To Wait. help us out. So does he... We brought Bear to help us out. Does he give yes. any bonus? Oh, yes. So you, um, you will actually each get, I'm going to say, plus one die for having him around. So Ooh, if okay. you want to roll one more there, um, you can. So that turns mine into a single die roll. It's still a fucking trash ass one. Oh, dude, I think I got a critical. Oh, wow. wow. Critical yeah. success. Okay. Dude, CJ, this is your game. So, <laughs> yes. Um, so I just, and, had, I just think I have a bad, bad shitty start. That's all. <laughs> um, so what I'm going to say this critical <laughs> shitty success start, shitty does medium, shitty <laughs> is <laughs> you, sh you tell Bear, like, listen, like, hit it here, hit it here. Like, you understand the mechanics of how this would work. And he just kind of goes ape shit, and he hits it with the cudgel like three times, and it just snaps off, and it falls. But it's not as loud as it could have been. Um, but also, um, you're finding that um, that loot is not being helpful right now. <laughs> um, I'm like kicking the wall. And, just and, kicking the wall. <laughs> and it is like super stressful like it's like adding to the stress he's making a lot of noise or something like it's like hey shut the fuck up um but you um you maybe like give him a backhand or you do something to put him in his place and he stops so that you don't take that point of stress oh i don't i, I don't or i still do no no only the leader takes it so like was you failing oh, would have oh, given right. her success okay um her orve one of them could have been the one to take the stress Okay. Um, but <laughs> because she got the critical success, she doesn't take the stress. No one takes stress. You cool. get these. You get this window off. Um, I'm assuming that you guys have some plan for how you're going to climb out of this prison. Don't worry, uh, your character uh, started. Uh, yeah, I, 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 I got a way to get out of here, but. I, I... I'd say it's a flashback to your standard tie the beds. Uh, the the, oh, bed, yeah, the sheets bed sheets together, together and, and yeah. yeah, yeah. Bay has been borrowing bed sheets for like the last three days. Um, like whenever he can sneak off, he'll just steal a bed sheet, and he's been tying them and storing them underneath his mattress. There you go. Um, you tie it off. Um, as you do. Um, I'm gonna get you guys to go ahead, and um, you guys can start climbing out. But before you do, give me one last fortune roll, guys. Not me. Um, two <laughs> dice, take the lower. Here we go! Rolling like Let's shit, see if... I got... Oh! A fiver! Yeah! Okay. Um, so yeah, you all start getting out the window. Uh, so, um, who's going first? I'll, I'll go first, shit. Back. Oh. Nope, you go. You go ahead. <laughs> Age Vay and Ludwig are, are, are kind of going a bit at, and, and Vay kind of ends up pushing Ludes over uh, and, and takes the window first, I guess. Okay. Yep. Vay, Vay climbs down. Um, you managed to do it. Like it, it's You're maybe not the fastest at it. I don't know how well good of a repeller you are, but you make your way down the wall. Um, and who's going next? I'll go next. I'm an I... first. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, I, uh, I uh, aged before beauty, I guess. I said that first time, I'll say it again. So uh, now I'm next. And uh, I assume my character's older than your character based off of nothing. Uh, I'm going to go for it, and uh, uh, I will rappel down. My guy's pretty repellent, so I feel like he's probably pretty good at repelling. Is that how that yeah. works? I don't know. All right. Yeah. Yeah, you make your way down. You're, you're um, it, it, like, even with him not going as quick, like, the two of you make it down pretty quick. Um, 
Uh, Myri, are you letting Bear and Elise go first? Uh, I will let Elise go first, but then I'm right after her because Bear's the big guy and I don't trust to go down the rope after him. <laughs> let, the, let the small people go down first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get, go, fuck, move, move, move. Well, uh, and we're going. Yeah, so the two of you start going down. Uh, Bear doesn't w- waits for, enough for you guys to to get a little bit down, and he starts going too. Um, and then because you guys rolled a mixed success on that one, guys, um, Sawtooth and a guard come into the room, and um, and and the guard comes flying out the window. He makes it to the ground before you guys do. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> um. And um, yeah, you guys are, are are scaling down this this wall. Um, Sawtooth is is also clamoring out the wall with you, because why not? The gang's all here. Um, but yeah, and um, you see Sawtooth. Um, he his uh, his his um, clothes are bloodstained. Uh, he was engaged in something. Um, but yeah. Um, and so the 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 six of you make it down. Um. What happens now, guys? You guys are outside of the prison. And now that you can look, you can see that beacon, that blue beacon. And um, you can see some of them, but you can feel all of them. There are just ghosts everywhere. And they're swarming around this location. And so, like, um, you can see, like, the forms of humanoids, and some of them almost look like dogs, and some of them, like, have, like, giant fish heads. Um, like, like, angler fish heads coming out of their hands, or where their it, arms would be. Like, they just, like, the when you, w- when you die, you don't have to look like how you looked in real life. It's, it's, you're able to express yourself in new and exciting ways. So these people are choosing to be ghost Fish head hands? Is a choice? Choosing. I think that's who they are, is what they <laughs> said. That's, that's who they are, is fish head hands? It's not a phase, Mom. Yeah, <laughs> but you see this. Um, and, and and as you Ugh. do, um, you oh, guys God, what are... What kind of ghost am I going to leave? <laughs> that's up to you. Let's not go there. So you guys left out of the second story. You're on the <laughs> northeast side of the prison. Okay, um, I did ping it on the Iron Hook floor plans, but we're all over the place here. Um, but yeah, it's on the northeast side. You guys see, off in the distance, you see what are called the Myers. Which is like kind of like a quarry that like most of the prisoners work in. You also see like okay. a collection of several large ponds um, with like huts around them. And the, those are... Um, Hagfish and eel farms. Hagfish? Which again, yes, hagfish. Gross. Yeah. Um, but you, that is what mostly what you eat. That's like your protein. Ugh. I'm like, uh, it's like yum. S- that's food. You know, mm, we don't know any better. Fish. You know about hagfish? Yeah. They make snot. They make uh, gross depending on your snot. lifestyle before you guys like, ended up in this situation, you may or may not have had access to things like goat and like chicken. Like, there is, like, actual food in the world. Just, it's expensive. Like, incredibly expensive. I think my character uh, has been eating uh, dumpster pizza. Whatever whatever dumpster pizza is. The equivalent of that. Uh, so you would think like hagfish are based. amazing, then? <laughs> no, see, the trick is, what you do is, hear me out, all right? Uh, listeners, hear me out. You call a pizza delivery place. You order a delivery to an address that's not your own. Then... Once they find out that they've been delivered to the wrong place, somebody says, no, I didn't order this. They send them back. They throw them in the dumpster. So you hang out by the pizza place, and then you go into the dumpster, and you get free pizza. Pizza dumpster. Dumpster pizza. It's free. All right. And as you guys look out, um, <laughs> you see you see that there's, there's movement. <laughs> you can hear dogs. You can hear gunshots behind you. Um, this like oppressive um, fear and like rage and like all sorts of emotions are just kind of like flooding into you in short waves. Not enough to stop you from what you're doing, but like you can tell that this is becoming like a, like a site for a massive spirit haunting. Um, And it feels oppressive and weird. And 
we're going to take our break here, guys. But before we do, I will just say that as you look um, upon these ponds, you see that the water is boiling. Boiling? Mm. Yes, the water is boiling. Steam is escaping. Fish stew it's like, like black boiling water? No, actually, this is clear water. This is regular water. Okay, it's just the yeah. seas are black. Yeah, the oceans are imagine that smell. Okay. Yes, and we will just take uh, five, ten minutes here, guys. Um, Sounds good. You go get yourself some Dr. Pepper. Like yeah, I'll, I'll get something. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're back from our break. We've got... Um, actually, I'm not drinking Dr. Pepper. I'm drinking Cowbell Bobcat Red Ale. Um, this this podcast is not sponsored by Cowbell. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, no, it's pretty good, though. Um, it's the first time I've had it, but it's a good red ale if you're into that kind of thing. Um, but where do we leave you guys? We left you guys with Adam requesting to call some people out. That's right. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I posted a thing in the Blades in the Dark Facebook group and uh, just saying, like, hey, we're making a thing. And some people liked it right away. So I want to say, hey, thank you to Loki, Devin, Andrew, Kenny, and William. Uh, I posted a thing saying that we're recording right now, and uh, you guys liked it, so I like you. So thank you, and I hope you guys check out the show, and I hope you enjoy it. If you do enjoy it, check out some of the other fantastic shows from Dragon's Greed Gaming. Also, uh, send us, uh, you know, some some conversation stuff. Let me know what you guys think, and uh, I'd love to hear from you. Yeah, actually, that's a good point. Um, I do respond to as many comments on the YouTube as I can, and at this point in time, there's not nearly enough, um, so I respond to all of them. Um, one day yeah. I hope that I can't. Um, and so you need to stress me out, guys. Like, um, I'm the GM. I don't get to <laughs> add stress to my character sheet in real life. Um, so I need you to do it for me. Um, inundate me with questions and, and uh, critiques about my GMing style. I will I will answer them. Um, I promise. Until I can't. Um, but yeah, with that said, um, we left you guys. You guys managed to escape the prison. Um, and just to paint the scene a little bit. Um, you guys have like probably, I'm going to say there's eight of these ponds. They're, they're purposefully hand dug ponds full of water. Um, they're all currently boiling. Um, you guys have like tall fences, uh, made out of wood, um, kind of lining up like a square around these fences. There's a gate on the far side that is currently open. Uh, behind you, you can hear the sounds of rioting. Um, and gunshots and like screams um, as people are being like tortured by ghosts um, as well as the, the staff at the prison and potentially the spirit wardens and uh, anyone else who happens to be there. It's just an absolute mess uh, what you left behind but thankfully you managed to get out in time thanks to uh, the uh, how distracting that uh, Ghost Ward was. And I just want to say, CG, that was a good call in some ways. Um, <laughs> it's going to bring you some heat later, I, I guarantee you. I'm sure. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> um, but um, the Spirit Wardens were definitely going to be a problem for you guys, but they oh, were I... very distracted, is what I'll say. And so I had to take them out of the equation. Um, oh, let's go through my eyes. Uh, that being said, um, you guys are in this hagfish field. You can hear, um, you guys know that you're going to have to head northeast to get to uh, the next district over, which is going to be the safest place for you at this point. That would be six towers. Um, you're going to have to get there. You're going to have to either get across on like a boat or you're going to have to cross the bridge. Um, you guys are wearing prisoners' uniforms. You're carrying um, a gun. Um, you've got three people with you. You've got um, a terrified-looking young woman uh, named Elise. Um, I gave her a last name. What is her last name? Her name is Elise Underth. Um, spelt under T-H. Um, Underth. Underth. Um, and you also have a man named Bear and a, um, a, um, a struggling addict. Um, someone in desperate need of support um, who goes by Sawtooth. Yes, he needs a friend. 
Um, and um, the six of you were standing there, and uh, Sawtooth is like kind of like scratching at his neck, um, and Bear just kind of glares at him, and he looks uncomfortable, and he's looking to you to see if you have some sort of plan about how you're going to get out of the district. And um, as I mentioned right before the break, the waters of these hagfish and these eel um, um, farms, which are just uh, these several ponds, um, they're boiling. You can see steam rising off of them. Um, Is... Because it's so cold out, Okay. you can definitely see it. Is that is that normal? Do they do that? Um, do they boil. I'm gonna say you wouldn't. Between the, the the six of you, definitely the three of you, um, you would know no. Um, I mean that would kill the fish, right? And that's not what that you makes want. Makes sense. That's what I would think. <laughs> yeah. So um, yeah, you guys want to head more or less northeast towards the district. Um. You do know that there is a man that hunts escaped prisoners. That is, he generally has like a crew of like these dogs. He's like, a, he's got a bunch of dogs with him. And um, they, um, and he has like other like dog trainers basically. And they run like a canine uh, group. But his name is Master Crockett. This is what he looks like. Oh my God, um, he's terrifying. <laughs> Those dogs are terrifying. But that's oh, the end, he looks very much like Reaper from Overwatch. Yes, he does. And um, that was a uh, Photoshop picture from from my partner, my wife. Uh, she put that together for me. So, well, tell her, uh, tell her I hate him. Um, is that a dog? <laughs> is that dog that big? Um, so one of them is. Um, like, oh my like, god. It, his dogs, he walks around with the Great Dane and like a German Shepherd or whatever kind of dog that is. I'm not, I'm not a dog biologist, but um, <laughs> <laughs> that's some kind of mutt. Yeah, so he's got like a very big dog with him, and then he's got a much faster dog with him. Um, but um, there's all sorts of different kinds of dogs, and there's more than him. They all kind of dress in those same things, but they don't necessarily wear the masks. That's a Master Crockett special. Um, mostly because he's well hated by most people who go in and out of Ironhook Prison. Because while yeah. you were fortunate enough to work inside the prison, when you work outside, Master Crockett's the one who's telling you what. Um, and that's kind of his his role. Is he is he works the laborers and he chases after escape prisoners. But you would know that that's something. He's around, and um, he is probably actively looking for people escaping at this point. What does it take because, for me to conjure a flashback? Uh, you just tell me about it. Do, like, it doesn't cost anything? Um, it depends what it is. It can cost zero, one, or two, or more stress. It depends on what you're asking me for. I will tell you what it is before you get too far into the description. You tell me what you're trying to do. I want to have... Uh, food with me that I've like prepared like for like the escape plan like because if I knew this guy was out there and these dogs okay. are out there I want to have like some sort of stinky like stinky cheese or stinky meat kind of thing okay oh. um, can, I do, can I do you one better can absolutely I, you can can I have done a flashback and tinkered and come up with like gathered up all that like kind of food or like chemicals that like we could like rub on ourselves on a trail that would like confuse the dogs okay so you want like something to kind of cover your scent or like to like fuck with the their sense of smell yeah hagfish snot <laughs> yeah um Okay, so I'm going to do get you to do two things. You already have arcane implements clicked off, but I'm going to get you to uh, click off tinkering tools. So that you're carrying, that's one of your loads. The, those tinkering tools are kind of what you used, and that can include alchemical supplies and stuff. Okay. Um, and we'll say that, like, you know, like you, you kind of made a couple deals in prison and you managed to get something. Um, you made some deals for favors that you never planned on filling out because you knew you were escaping. 
Um, yeah. but, I'll totally, but, I'll totally pay you back. Don't worry about it. And, I'll pay you next you, week. <laughs> we can hold off on saying what the effect of the drug inside the food is, but you successfully managed to drug these foods, but you're going to pay two stress for it. Okay. Because um, that would normally be the, like to craft or acquire an asset as a downtime action. Um, we obviously don't have downtime actions because this is the first score. Um, so yeah, uh, that's a two stress um, crafting thing. I'll take it. Um, and what I'm going to get you to do is to roll a tinker, controlled for standard effect, to see how potent this uh, drug is. Oh, not Okay. Um, okay, I got something in mind for that. Um, okay, but yeah, at this point in time, you don't know that it failed. Like, her character doesn't know that it mm -hmm. failed. Um, you did the best you could with what I you don't had, know about which was dogs. not a lot. <laughs> yeah. Well, you nope. worked with what you have in prison, too. It, exactly. Like, you, you were yeah. borrowing and, and scrimping and stealing to get what you could. Um, and so, yeah, the... The six of you are, are are moving. I'm presuming, like through this fag hagfish thing. Are you oh, moving? Yeah. I don't want to go on the bridge. I'd say. Yeah. Someone narrate it for me. Someone narrate like how you're moving, where you're moving. Well, we have Elise here, so I think she knows a thing or two about boats. Help us get across. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. I could. Uh, uh, there's six of us. Uh, we won't be able to do it on a gondola per se, but. Uh, Hopefully, there's like a small ship or something, like a small uh, rowboat. Um, I'm sure we could think it. How big are these ponds? Oh, these ponds, like you can walk by them. Like that's not, okay. you're not, you're not stuck behind the ponds, but you are in a fenced off area. So there's like these eight foot tall wooden fences around here to prevent other people that aren't prisoners from coming in and stealing the food. Okay. So we can, we can just skirt around the ponds. Yes. Yeah. Um, so you can it's skirt like, around the pond. How deep are these? Is this like, like rice paddies or are these things like deep or? Um, I don't think you've ever gone in there to find out. Um, but probably also they're boiling. So I don't know if we would really want to. Like... Well, yeah, I want to avoid being in the fucking bo <laughs> boiling ponds for sure. I'm just curious if these are like deep or if they're like, you know, like, like a foot deep or if they're like marshy or. But it's got to be um, like water, water, right? Because it's got fish in it. Yeah. I don't think your character... Yes, it is water, water. Um, though the water is um, is murky um, just because okay. they don't really clean it out properly. Sure, yeah. Um, I mean, how the like fuck are you going to do that? Like, with a, with a pump? I don't know. All right, so... Yeah. Um, I think... But um, I would but... say that your character might not know this, but they're usually, like, about 10 feet deep. Okay, so it's not like a like a, a wade through it kind of thing. It's not like a like you walk through and it goes up to the top of your boots. No, but like okay. if there's eight ponds, they're like easily ten feet apart on the left okay, side. So there's enough. There's like there's enough thirty to get through. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, so I mean, I think that if we if we know that there's a guy with dogs in here. Possibly. Well, he's in the he's in the district. He's somewhere in the district. Yeah, He's so in... I mean, possibly. Yeah. So, and then there's a big ass fence on the other side. I think we just run. We run down the middle, and like all of us uh, are hauling ass and running. And you know, we've got uh, you know uh, all of us in the same. We're all wearing the same uniform and running, running, running down in between the ponds as, as we approach the fence. And it's like a wooden fence, you said. Yes. Is um, it like now... vertical, like a? like a like a picket fence or is it like a, like a horizontal thing like it's made out of logs or what do we got um so they're 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 vertical logs that are braced kind of like fortress style okay. like so like okay. the tops are, are shaved down so that they're spiky like um, a palisade and, yes exactly but there is also razor wire along the top if you go oh, if fuck. you cross if you cross right um it would probably take you like five to six minutes to run straight from where you are at the prison wall to the, to where the gate is, but the gate is open. The gate is open. I don't know. What do you think? I, do, we go for the, do we go for the gate or we go over the top? I mean, I, I think I think I think if we go over the top, I mean, obviously it's a bit pointy and there's a and there's a razor wire up there. But uh, going through the gate, I, who who knows? There could be there be guys with guns. I think I mean, I the still, gate's too risky. I still got my cloak. 
throw it over top of the razor. I like it. I like it. I like it. I can take off my shirt. You know, I I don't want to. I don't want to uh, offend anybody. Please don't. Yeah. No, just keep yeah, that on. Okay, no. okay, okay, okay. Keep I got that a lot. Go I got a shirt. lot of nipples. I got a lot of nipples. I did not I need to know that. You'll find out. I'm thinking instead yeah, of going over the fence, you know, we've got a ram here with us. His name's Bear. I think we go through the fence. Um, what do you think, big guy? And... You go through the fence. You think you take this thing down? It's 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 uh, it's, uh it looks like it's made out of a bunch of trees. <laughs> but yeah, maybe, like maybe you knock it down. I don't, I don't know what world you live in. I'm big, but I I can't just like burst through walls. Like I'm not made out of metal. Yeah, let me down, sense. bear. <laughs> <laughs> you let me down. <laughs> uh, Sawtooth, uh, Sawtooth, um. You guys are taking too long for him, and he seizes um, his way to Ether, and, and and he sprints towards the open gate. I guess, I guess he's got a plan. Let's, let's follow the doctor. He's a doctor, right? He's got to have no, some kind of No, how about that is a distraction. We go somewhere else. <laughs> we, go over the, we go over the wall now. Let him go. Do his thing. Let's go. Okay, okay let's go. Um, and uh, okay. I will follow that lead. That sounds good to me. Yeah. The whale, the the wall is reasonably easy to scale. Um, well, well, we can we can either have everyone roll individually, or you guys can do a group action, whichever you prefer. Um, yeah, I'm I'm open to what well, how you want to handle it, but um, basically, you guys are gonna climb over this wall. You'll use that cloak, um, which means you will lose the cloak. I'm assuming um, to climb over the wall and jump off the other side. Um, I mean, unless you guys want to say we brought some of the blankets with. From when uh, we no, I can take off my shirt. Show you some some nips, uh, lots of nips, dozens. I think I think um, the cloak's good enough to go with. <laughs> okay, yeah. fine. I'm okay. gonna take off my shirt anyway. Uh, so okay, so um, do you guys yeah. want to try to do the group thing? We could do. Uh, I mean, I can roll survey. I'm not very good at it. I feel like survey might be appropriate to try to find the right place to go over. Or I, I feel like uh, maybe a finesse will do it, or a wreck. I could see any of those working. I feel like I would say survey, and I also wouldn't mind taking this one. Um, I have not taken any stress so far, as far as like jumping in, and so <laughs> I feel a little uh, stressed. I okay. feel like Vay being the first one out of the prison might have been the first one, kind of looking around and uh, determining that. I guess well. Might have first had the plan of going through the fence, but with a secondary option of going over. So, okay, yeah. Um, give yourselves all a plus one because Elise is there, um, and Elise is uh, is pretty um, observant, I'll say. Um, so yeah, um, go ahead and make your survey rolls with a plus one die. I think that's a flat. Roll. So I got a fiver. Okay. So I, I don't have anything in survey, so do I still roll two dice now that I have the Um, you roll one dice. Okay. Oh. Is this risky? Um, yes. Yeah, this is risky uh, um, for reasons that you don't fully understand right now. Um, it rolled. If you got uh, zero, you got to put plus one die. And then I'll turn it into one instead of the two take the lowest. Ooh! There you go. Yeah, well, Get stressed. it's a failure either way, so yes. Um, so th that'll be one point of stress for um, Vey there. Do any of you have a full success? Uh, nope. No. Okay. So you start climbing. Um, um, like Bear just um, gives um, the ladies a boost um, without really asking if they even wanted one. Um, he's misogynistic that way. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so he he kind of he helps um, Elise and, and um, Myri up, and then he starts scaling. Um, Myri, you lay out the um, the razor wire there. Um, what I will say happens because of the partial success is, is Sawtooth is running, and you can kind of hear him, um, like his feet hitting the the like the, the sloppy ground because it's like very like wet here. Um, it's rained recently. Um, and you just hear like this broiling come to a head and then like water splashing. Um, and so if you look over, you see him like, he's like 
running as fast as he can. And at first it was like almost gleeful, like, oh my God, I'm going to escape. And now it's in fear because Sawtooth is being chased um, by like spirits that are like crawling on the ground, but like faster than he's running. Mm. Um, there's, there's, um, I'm going to say there's about five of these spirits just kind of crawling out of these ponds. Um, they're chasing after him. Um, but they seem to be ignoring you. Sounds good to me. <laughs> <laughs> when this started, right, like, Zatu started running one direction, and we all started <laughs> running another direction, right? I just want to yeah. make sure that, okay, like, yeah. the separation has happened. Um, yes. At, like, he left us, we're not leaving him. I just want to, like, I feel really bad, because <laughs> I grow a little attached to him. That's okay. Uh, he, I don't yeah, have to kill him. Poor Juggy. <laughs> if anything, new, I'll... we can get a new meth head. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so Sawtooth is running. He's being chased by spirits. Um, he's cursing at them in Skolvani, um, uh, which none of you probably speak. Um, but yeah, he is cursing at them in a, in a foreign language as he runs. Um, and the, and yes, so you do make it over. You drop off the other side. It's only an eight foot tall fence. Um, and so you hit the ground and maybe you're unsteady on your feet for a second, but it doesn't hurt. Um, and you guys uh, start moving. Um, you guys are kind of skirting around this giant pit uh, that's been blown away by bombs and, and um, chipped away at by pickaxes um, known as the mire. You see like camps all around um, and you see like a lot of very impoverished looking people kind of like um, nervously like kind of looking at the prison and milling about they're uncertain you hear the sound of dogs approaching uh. and um, as you as you approach you get spotted by some of these people and they start pointing at you Aww, um, you're far enough away that you can't hear what they're saying, but you're I mean, you're in an open field. Um, the only thing beside you right now is like this big old pit. And then on the other side of this like field and pit, is that where like it's the end of Dunslow and it meets like Dusk River? You guys have like about two miles to run to get to where you're looking for. Oh damn! I made that okay. in about half an hour. Yep, yeah, it's a total like you could sprint that far if you or, or run that far, anyways. Um, but you, you gotta do it. Um, and so how are you guys moving? You know that there we are got... dogs coming, and you know that you have been spotted by some of the citizenry of Dun Dunstone. Uh, it doesn't look good. Uh, uh, um, could I have done a flashback to have studied the... be it, like, the area around here, or, like, the the guard patrols so i would know the best route to take yes but i'm gonna say that it's um controlled so you're gonna make a roll and you're gonna pay uh one stress um for this flashback um and it's gonna be controlled for limited effect because you've only really been in the prison so even if you found windows to look out of and you've kind of been paying attention you can't see three or four miles away necessarily. So like, you're gonna have a pretty good idea of like this part where you're at right now, but when you get to the next part, you're not gonna have that knowledge. Take one more, but uh, don't, don't ask it, don't make me do anything else after this. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. Taking stress is always your choice. And that's okay. that's important to remember. I'm, I'm telling them, you, you, you guys do stuff now. <laughs> yeah. yeah, gotcha. All right. Um, Daddy, yeah. yeah. Yeah, make your study. You said no. You said, was it risky or controlled? Um, it's it's um controlled, so controlled you're not for limited. for limited effect. Yeah, yeah, you're not really in danger for doing this three days ago. Uh, you know. Um, okay. Um, yeah. So you um you have a pretty good idea that like you're gonna be able to like if you skirt. Um west a little bit and you kind of move away from this like village built around the edge of the mire um you're gonna head towards where the lightning tower and where you know the deathland scavengers 
which are people that go out into the Deathlands and try to make a living that way. Um, they are independent of the rest of them, and they probably don't give a shit about you. So if you can move closer to them, you're more likely to avoid guard patrols. Okay. Um, what that'll do is it'll take you further away from the shortest distance to the closest district. I'm okay with it. Yeah. It doesn't mean that you can't grab a boat and, and make your way the long way around. So we're like skirting right along this village, right? Um, I would say that like it's a couple hundred feet away from you. Like it's like that you can see them and they can see you. But you can't mm -hmm. hear each other. You couldn't like yell at them right now and, and have a conversation. Okay, fair. In my head, I was wondering whether or not um, we could, you know, make a quick detour and see about um, getting rid of this um, prison garb and getting a little more uh, inconspicuous as quickly as possible and whether or not like that could be something we could reasonably do considering the time because there's definitely there is a feeling of chase right now and so i'm not sure how realistic that is as far as like where we're at um yeah i, I mean you are welcome to do that as long as the group is is in agreement. do you guys want to steal some clothes before you make your way a little bit uh west are, are we we're being chased by dogs um you hear dogs coming from the north so they're moving towards the prison. You're not being okay. chased by dogs. They're not coming okay. from the prison. They're coming from outside the prison. Okay. Uh, if we are not being chased by dogs, then I say, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we can get changed and uh, get a little bit more discreet. Yeah. All okay. right. So if that's the case, then um, I'm going to kind of, you know... Uh, point my finger over and um, have the group go and, and run up to maybe not necessarily the closest house, but um, maybe take a look at kind of get a sense of which one looks like, you know, might be holding, you know, a, a poor family, someone that we could kind of jump in and um, very more easily um, convince or intimidate considering our, our, our group of, okay. of people. Um, so you go towards the um, the outskirts of this village and you see like there's like kind of like the houses are very close together. Um, and, it, and it seems like most of the families here are poor, but you actually see some like um, some some clotheslines outside. Um, and oh, they nice. have. Yeah. And so they have them there. There's people around, though. So like there's like like, you know, like uh, men and women just kind of like beating rugs and then like hanging behind them are a bunch of like just like ratty looking clothes on the clothesline um and there's probably like four or five of these just like people there um but um they see you and, and they, they kind of look at you um in your prison garb and you can tell that they are a little bit afraid unsure of what you're gonna do all right well i'm gonna come in and uh maybe try to sway them a little bit so i'm gonna kind of approach very um openly and it's like Hello, folks. Uh, we'll only be a moment, and the sooner we can be done and through here, the the, the quicker we can get out of your hair. Um, we're just here for a little bit of cotton, a little bit of fabric, and um, you know, if we're able to change before any of your neighbors get here, then um, well, better for both of us, and uh, maybe the dogs don't end up staying here. So, um, don't mind us. We'll be out of your hair real quick. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm gonna say I'll, I'll give you a devil's bargain. Devil's bargain is is that the clothes won't fit all of you. Like you're all kind of different sized people, but you can take plus one die. They'll they'll give you the clothes, but at least a couple of you are gonna look really odd, and maybe stand out just a little bit. Probably the giant guy. <laughs> <laughs> Off yes. Belly. Yes. This this is uh, the devil's top. bargain to see if he's wearing a crop top or not. <laughs> yeah, I <laughs> hope so, man. I mean, I think they're all going to be crop tops on bear. <laughs> Little belly shirt, show off the button. So the okay. devil's bargain does that like 
add one to the modifier? It adds one die to the roll. Um, so you can take an additional die. You're more likely to succeed. It's just whether it succeeds or fail. I actually did it wrong last time. All um, right. I should not be saying a devil's bargain. If you fail, this happens. It should happen regardless of whether you succeed or fail. Yeah. Um, mm. So this is the devil's bargain done right. Um, is yeah, like do a couple of you specifically bear look a little weird in your getup? If I close on upon closer inspection. Would you pass scrutiny, or would it be more difficult to pass scrutiny? That's fair. And is it fair to say that this position is more controlled, considering that um, we are five we, possibly yes. intimidating people? I, I well, no. <laughs> you, are you? Are, you're swaying them. You didn't mm. say you were commanding them. Because I'll say this: it's controlled because you're not actively being aggressive with them. You're trying to convince them. That's how I understood it. If yep. you're trying to intimidate them, then I'm going to opt the risk a little bit because these are very poor people and they might be willing to die for the last clothes they own. Yeah. Oof. Okay. No, that's totally fair. I will. Um, I'm going to take the, the devil's bargain. And so I'll add one die because I have no sway um, despite the situation calling for it. And we'll roll. Oh. And it's a okay. failure. Um,. Okay, um, so it becomes risky. Uh, a couple of the men that were helping with the laundry here, um, they grab like, like they, one of them grabs like a hoe and he kind of steps up to you. Um, and, and he doesn't look certain, but like I said, these are very poor people. These are like the last clothes that they own. This is like a week's worth of their wages that you're asking them for. Oof, great. Um, and he says, Feels good. no, you can't have this. Oh, man. I feel like we got to double down. Uh, <laughs> I mean, feel free. Double down. Double down. All right. Um, so if that's the case, um, I'm going to take a command. I'm going to I'm going to step up and uh, compel them with a bit more enforcement. And so I'm going to brandish the, the gun that I have and and. Um, you know, maybe I wasn't making myself quite as clear as I could have been, but, um, I wasn't asking. I was, uh, I was telling. And, uh... Okay, okay so you get a partial success. Um, so you cow them, but I'm gonna give you a complication. For it to work, you have to kill someone. Ooh. Ooh. Or at least shoot them. You don't necessarily have to kill them, but they probably won't live. Infection's a bitch. Yeah, aim for the knees. knees. Both of them, if you can. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's the worst. Um, yeah, I think I think Faye's in a desperate enough situation that um, I think he's gonna uh, sh shoot at the arm um, for the man who's holding the hoe. Can't he, if if he so desired, couldn't he, like, do the... Take the you, he, you could resist this role. You could resist that consequence. Oh, 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 thank you, actually. Um, yes, sorry, and I, yes. I, I, I'm bad for not reminding people of that. Resistance <laughs> and marking XP for desperate actions. I am uh, bad for remembering to remind people about that. Ooh, I don't know but, if I've had any desperate actions. No, uh, Myri's the only one who has yet. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to resist that one then. Um, I'm going to say that, um, okay. no, that doesn't happen. Okay, so you can roll. So you're going to take six stress, but you don't have to mark it yet. Um, that is a resolve roll. Yeah. Um, I'm going to say because you were, you're, you're commanding, you're talking. Um, so roll your resolve to see if you can hold yourself together enough to not pull the trigger. And, and you will succeed in not pulling the trigger. Um, Ooh, success. So, yes. Um, yeah, so you take three stress, um, right. as opposed to six, which is good. Okay. Um, right. so yeah, you, um, the man sees it in your eyes. He's just like, he was going to pull that trigger and he, he puts the hoe down and he puts his hands up and steps away. They all step away and they watch as you just take their hard work, their hard earned clothing <laughs> and put it on a man that's way too big for it. <laughs> like a 
leg from a pair of pants on an arm and yeah. uh <laughs> yeah and elise is a little too small for the for the, the the plain shirt that she's wearing so it's like super baggy on her um you know you guys um some of some of them it fits quite well like ludes and vex or ve and uh, myri they all look fine but these companions you have they look a little silly Man, um, so but I'm going to change, and I take my shirt off. <laughs> and, like, if anybody looks, like, this this dude's got a lot of nipples. Like, a lot. Like, a we lot of nipples. Coming. Like, 12 <laughs> nipples, at least. Also, it's, uh, what you saw before, where it looked like he had a bunch of, like, shit on him from cleaning the toilets. He takes the shirt off, and, like, he, it looks like he's got a bunch of shit all over him. It's like this gross brown goop. Uh, but then he's like, he's like, and he like kind of like rubs some of it off and he like puts on the new shirt and, uh, he's like, uh, uh, wait, how's it look? How's it look? Do I look okay? Is this fine? And it's, you know, he's, he's, he's buttoning up the shirt and he's like, I, I, I don't, this isn't really my color. I, I, I don't really, I don't know. No. You look you like shit, but it's, it's an improvement. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, thank you. I think. <laughs> All right. <laughs> bears just like <laughs> bears wearing this uh, shirt and like the sleeves are just too small so like they're just rip he rips them right off nice um nice. and but um and the shirt doesn't quite pull down far enough for him um it's kind of stuck on his belly um, you look good you look good you look good Unbut unbutton the bottom button it'll hide your gut uh he just kind of looks at you and and he does it. And there, you yeah, his... there you go. There you go. I'll pat him on the back. There you go. Yeah. Looking good. Yeah. And the buttons are straining, but he's wearing a shirt. Um, all right, guys. Um, you guys are making your way. Are you guys going west to avoid the patrols and head towards the where the Deathlands are and take the long way around, or are you going to try and just? hope that you can get by the guards um or these these they're they're hunters they're not really guards that these are um kind of like uh, uh i guess like prison escapee hunters for lack of a better word fugitive hunters i think we yes. committed to the long way it was safe for yeah oh and i should point out um actually um that you guys hear the screams getting louder and like it's starting to like there wa it wasn't raining like really that hard um during this time but like it's starting to storm just above the prison and the hmm. the eye of that storm is growing larger behind you i think uh, i i i got no plans so if you guys want to take the long way around that's fine with me i mean i got i got, <laughs> I got a lot of free time <laughs> now that i'm outside of the prison it's all free time, baby. It's all free. Three, two, one. Ethan, make a decision. Where are you going? <laughs> oh, sounds like we're taking the long way. All right. Uh, so, yeah, you guys, um, the five of you kind of start moving west, um, at least very tentatively, and Bear is just almost frustrated um, with, like, he doesn't know how to help beyond what he's already done, but he's willing to follow you for now. Um you do see um, Sawtooth um, like sprint into the village just as you're leaving. Um, and behind him, ghosts start assaulting the people that you just left behind. Uh, that would uh, be a that's little bad. Sawtooth. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, he's quite quick. You thought he's way faster than you thought he'd be. Um, but yeah, no, he um, he is still kicking anyways for the time being. Um, and yeah, so you guys make your way west. Um, as you do, um, why don't we... You guys want to do this as a group action where you're prowling and hiding? Or do you want me to roll a fortune roll to see if you get found? Um, I, don't have, I don't have anything in prowl. I, got, I mean, I my think... prowl is pretty decent. I could... I could... I could try for that. How much stress do you have? I'm pretty stressed out. I got I got three open. Well, the good news is, is that as long as one of you succeeds, he can't take more than two. 
because there's only oh, three perfect. players. Here we go. Let's do that. Here we go. Yeah. So everyone make a um, a prowl roll here. I got a partial. Uh, is this risky? Yes. Um, risky for standard effect. Oh, CX. CX. Oh, I six, no, one. oh, but you got nothing in it. So it's a, ugh. Yeah. So we always go with the highest roll. So because they managed to get a six, it supersedes. Um, it makes him the leader, actually. He did the best. So he actually takes the stress um, as he corrects CJ. Ah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so Vey seems to have a handle on um, paying attention to um, Myri um, as she just um, is failing to um, blend in well. She's not used to this kind of thing. Um, Look at but, all uh, the spirits! Whoa! Just yes. a, a, a little rubbernecking a little too hard. <laughs> like, no, yes. pay attention, girl. Um, and yes, oh, um, so the, you guys are making your way um, over towards the Deathlands, and um, as you do... Um, you manage to, um, you see the dog hunters, they're heading towards the village, they're sniffing out, um, and, um, they see Sawtooth, and Sawtooth, um, runs the other direction, um, and then they start chasing after him, and because of that, they seem to ignore you for now. Um, you make your way over to the Deathlands, um, like, towards, like, where the Lightning Tower is. Um, which is just like this, like almost monolithic um, building that at the top of it is like a series of lightning rods. Um, and it's like constantly arcing between it and the next closest um, lightning tower, which is in the next district over. And it's creating like, these barriers that ghosts can't get through. Um, which is what, just so you know, that's how the city stays more or less not overrun by ghosts on a good day. Um, you make your way there. Do you see like an encampment? Um, you see like a lot of people like kind of milling around. There's probably like 30 or 40 of them there. Um, they maybe spot you, they maybe don't, but I, it, they don't seem to react to your presence at all. Um, unless you get like closer. Um, but you know that now that you've kind of gotten this far over, if you head north, you're about like a mile away from the closest canal. I think we take Let's it. Do that? Yeah. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Hell I yeah. I can do a mile. I can do a mile. I'll make it there in uh under ten minutes. Yeah. Yeah. So the 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 five of you start running. Like you guys know that like if you run you can make it there pretty quick. Uh you get to the canal. Um when you do it takes a bit of time as you walk along the edge of the water. Um you're you're looking for a boat of some kind. Um, you do see um, the gondoliers. There's um, there's a pair of gondoliers. Is um, that some weird faction, or is that just like a like a dude that pilots a gondola? It's both. <laughs> of course. Um, <laughs> okay. Yeah, the gondoliers. Um, they take payment, which you don't have any money on you, but they take payment in exchange for. Um, um, ferrying passengers um, throughout the canals of the city. Um, it's one of the fastest ways to travel in Duskfall. Uh, I, we could we could probably uh, take one of these boats, but I feel like that might be bad in the long run. But it'll get us out of here quick. Yeah. What do you think, boss? <laughs> well, Elise, you're a you're from the Docker Guild. What's uh, what's your connection with uh, with the gondoliers? Uh, I, I I um I don't really know. Uh, that they're. I, I heard they yell at the sea. That's what my dad always said. <laughs> I yell at the sea sometimes. But um, I yeah, I don't hurts. really know. Like that they, they you can pay them some money and they can go places. But I don't have any money. No uh. No influence from uh, from working at the Docker Guild. That... No, very different. Um, like I'll just say, one's a labor union and one's like a weird occult uh, group of people that yell at the ocean to keep it at bay. You keep the ocean at the bay. <laughs> it's a good place for it. <laughs> yeah, 
so yeah like <laughs> like basically i'm giving you guys the option if you want to take a little bit more time i'm gonna tick that last box on the clock if you want to try and stop these gondoliers because um yeah like i'll say this off in the distance like that storm has started to rage and you can see the spirits are leaving the prison as the beacon starts to die but they're not they're stuck inside the lightning barrier and so they're starting to spread over the district all right i gotta take i got we gotta get on this boat we gotta get on this boat we don't got time for this shit <laughs> that storm's coming and uh you know what uh, i'll deal with the consequences i, I you know, it's a problem for future loots right okay that's not for me. <laughs> All right, I'm going to try to take the boat. I'm going to roll a finesse to finesse the oars away from this person. What do I need to do? <laughs> um, yeah. Finesse so, them into the into the water while I take their boat. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm willing to do that. I'm going to say that this is a desperate action. Okay. Um, so you go ahead and mark success if you do roll it um, for standard effect. Okay, here we go. Uh, partial success so it counts right uh that does count so yeah you um you jump into the canal and you land on the boat with the guy um without hesitating he turns around draws a dagger and stabs you in the arm before you push him off the boat with the oar <laughs> um so yeah that that is a level two harm called dead arm okay well, uh how do i do that um, so if you go to your character sheet, I'm in there. Um, where... the sweat dropped the, oh, the I witch? see. There it is. So in level two, I put in dead arm, dead arm. Now you can resist harm is different than other consequences because you can't resist it. If you resist it, you move it down one step. Okay. You don't necessarily get rid of it. What this is, is your right arm has a blade, um, was cut so deep that like your arm, your left arm isn't working properly. And so you're going to take minus one dice on everything else you roll for the rest of the score. Um, we'll ride with it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I got stabbed. I'm like, ah, shit, shit. Oh my God. So I got the, I, I took the guy out and I got the oars. I'm like, I can't, I can't. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> And I'm I'm squirting yeah. blood out of my arm, and I got uh, you know it's up in the bicep, and I'm I'm trying to put pressure on it, and like as soon as I take my hand off, it just like spurts out, and I'm like, I'm like I got uh, I got st <laughs> that fucker stabbed me, stabbed me good. Here, let me take uh, let me take one of those oars. Ah, oh, fuck, I'm bleeding. You guys are gonna have to yeah. row the boat. I got uh, I got a kind of a thing going on here. Uh, yeah. Today I got uh, <laughs> I'm feeling woozy. So you have another problem here. There's only four seats on. There's only room for four of you on the gondola. How many people does Bear Count is? <laughs> I'll, I'll say it counts as one person for this. Oh, that's great. Uh, so fuck them. No, uh, somebody's gonna have to stay behind. Uh, I, it's not gonna be me. I got stabbed for this. I'm, I'm part of you guys. I mean, right? Okay. You, right? 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 Oh. Lutes, Can you've done your someone part. hold onto the boat as they pull, paddle across? <laughs> um. So the three of you get on, and and you see Bear and Elise kind of look at each other, realizing there's only one more seat. Do you? Oof. Do you invite one of them to come on to the boat with you? Do you leave them both behind, or do you let them fight it out? Hey, is that a, that's not going to be much of a fight. Uh, ooh, uh. Hey. So, so my idea of someone just like hanging onto the boat on the side. Of um, it's a boat, not a like, helicopter. Yeah, and, and well, it's also one of those things where like sitting calmly in 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 your in your own home, it totally comes to mind as something that could happen. But um, kind of like Jack and Rose at the end of Titanic, I think it's more <laughs> narratively interesting if one of them gets left behind. And okay. so for some reason, oh, nobody fuck. thought of it. Fuck, yeah. I mean, that's honestly, that's, that's, oh my God. I don't know. I don't know who we leave behind. I mean, honestly, my opinion is we take the big guy. 
as opposed to the the mysterious person who I don't know what the hell she's good at. It might be something really important, but it uh, I don't know what it is. And I can tell you, if we leave her behind, it doesn't matter. We leave the big guy behind, we're leaving behind a big guy. We leave the mystery person behind, it remains a mystery forever. I don't think... I, I think the option we should take is... Uh, I, I don't think we should take either of them. I think you might... It, it might <laughs> seem like we're putting our, our, our chips in and, and, we're, and we're folding, but... I bet you their odds are better off if they're together as far as also getting off this island. And so why not split the group in two? Um, you know, sure, they're both very capable and they'll find their own way. And uh, we'll see you on the other side. Yeah. Hey, so you're... you guys, just as they're kind of looking at each other um, and, and there's that moment where it's like that we can't both go, um, you guys kick off without both of them. Um, I always Bear, remember you. Bear throws the cudgel at you guys. It doesn't do anything. It just kind of hits the water. Um, and you hear him cursing at you in, um, in the island that they speak in, uh, the language that they speak on the Dagger Isles. Um, and What's Elise looks... Like? Um, it sounds like a weird combination of like Caribbean and Scottish. What does um, it sound like? Can, you, can you do it? No, no, Sorry. I can't. <laughs> it <was worth> <laughs> <job>. <laughs> um, no, um, it sounds like what he sounds like because I'm not very good at all accents. Also, um, before we go too, too deep, I just want to check in because I was like, oh, we should do this. Um, like, are, are we good with leaving them both behind? Like, I, I kind of said that. Was that necessarily me just kicking off the boat without I love it. discussing I love it. with the other I will, I will say gonna, that sometimes I'm making it rock, is. Paper, rock, paper, scissors them. <laughs> make them rock, paper, scissors yeah, Okay, the here's on. the deal. You guys you guys are going to do rock, paper, scissors best out of 16 and uh, we're going to we're going to wait for <laughs> you. Mine's only we're, one. I swear, <laughs> yeah. I swear we're going to wait for happened. you. Oh, oh, we left. Sorry. <laughs> hey, yeah. it wasn't my idea. I'm still cool. It was the <laughs> other guy. It's like, it wasn't me, it was Faye. <laughs> it was yeah. the other guy. I'm still cool. I would have brought both of you with. I would have left him behind, but he's kind of in charge, so he gets to make the call. Um, And so um, we'll end the score there, guys. Um, You guys successfully managed to row away. Um, guys, we scored. And get... Yes. Um, <laughs> you, you guys successfully escaped from Iron Hook Prison. That was your first score. Um, I took it a little easy on you guys. You guys were left with a bunch of stress and only a little bit of harm. So, good on you. But you took out a tier three faction, guys. That's, um, Fuck yeah. you did well. Fuck yeah. Um, you made a couple of good decisions. I don't know if that um, came across or not, but you did make some good decisions. You only had to betray all three of your friends. To do <laughs> it. We didn't have to. We, we chose <laughs> to. <laughs> <laughs> chose to. <laughs> Um, but you do make it out, and I'm going to describe something to you that happens while you're wrong. Okay. Um, because I think this might be the catalyst for why you guys become a cult. And so as you're going, you enter into the canals underneath the city. So it's, it's like um, they're covered. Um, you actually go underneath the city. And as you do, there's like currents that guide you, you find that you don't even need to row, you just have to focus on not falling off the boat. And as you do, um, you hear and you feel um, that that aura that go like ghosts give off. It's like that fear and that rage. Um, and then you feel something a little bit different the deeper you go. As you're navigating, um, using your best recall and sense of direction, um, you do manage to make your way to Six Towers, but before you do, you um you enter into this area and it opens up and it looks like a cathedral that's been submerged in water. The drowned cathedral. And you see spirits everywhere. And they're but they're they're not angry and they're not scared. They're content. And you can kind of feel them like as you are in this area, you can feel them kind of whispering stuff to you, but it's not in a language that you understand. Um, but you get the idea that they're trying to share knowledge. You get the idea that they're 
asking you for a favor, but you don't know what it is. Um, and one of the spirits, um, it kind of like floats down and it looks like a wisp. It doesn't have like a body or a shape, but it looks like a wisp. And as it does, it kind of extends its... As it floats in front of you, um, it like shines like a light in your eyes. And you find it hard to see for a second. Um, but when it clears, you guys are standing in a field. And there's grass. You've never seen grass before. And you look up into the sky and it's like blinding because there's this giant yellow orb in the sky and it's warm and it goes away in an instant. You guys just saw the sun for the first time in a thousand years. Did you, did you guys die? I think I died. <laughs> did you die? Am I here? Can you guys hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah. Have to check that arm. Yeah, but, um, I I've lost a lot of, I lost a lot of blood. I'm feeling a little woozy. But as you look around, it doesn't look like a cathedral anymore. It's just exactly like the city you're used to. It's dark and it's sullen. It's empty. You don't feel that sense of contentment anymore. And you look and it's just more graffiti and more gang signs and it's just open water. And you row your way to Six Towers. And we will end the score there, guys. Um, we totally scored. You did. Um, point, so, point. <laughs> did you guys want to go over payoff and stuff now? Yeah, man. How's that work? Want to know what you? Yeah, let's talk about it. Um, you guys can follow along if you want. I'll just open it and show it to you. Um, bam. Um, so you guys should be able to look off, look at that. Um, so we're just going to start at the top where it says pay off after a score the PCs take stock of their income from the operation. A successful score generates both rep and coin. So we'll start with reputation. You guys have developed a reputation because people are aware that you three escaped the prison, that you worked as a group and people are, are believing that you might have maybe been brought into prison together. Um, okay. That's obviously not true, but that's kind of the vibe that people are getting, especially now that we have three NPCs out in the world that saw you help each other and forsake them. Who might still be alive. <laughs> oh, they're alive. I know they're alive. I, I make character art for them. They're still alive. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh Okay, so what am I looking at? I'm looking for the crew sheet. Reputation. So you guys see um, where it says rep uh, at the top there? Yeah. Okay. So you guys, by default, earn two reputation. Cool. So add two right now. Uh, you do it. If the tar Otherwise, I'm going to keep doing uh, it. Okay. If the target of the score is higher tier than you, take plus one rep per tier higher. They were a tier three. Um, I'm a, I'm a kind of averaging out. We're zero, aren't we? Yes. So that's three more rep. Um, you guys did not keep the operation completely quiet. Um, so don't worry about that. Um, so yeah, you guys earned five rep on your first score, which is pretty Hell good. Hell yeah. Good. Five's a good number. Uh, now we're gonna you guys earn coin i'm narratively speaking you guys actually um you guys have a gun you have like a few things that you've collected and and in order to be able to start your life you're gonna have to sell that stuff um and that's kind of like sometimes where coin comes from in the payoff you're gonna all you're gonna have a total of four coin, but that four coin also includes the two coin that you would start with when you actually made your crew in the first place. So you really you earn two coin from that, and your freedom, which is uh, priceless. Yeah, sounds nice. Um, 
our next thing we're going to look at is heat. Um, oh, yeah, sorry. Um, I don't have an image for you guys yet. If you guys find something, um, feel free to um, to send it off to me and I can throw it in. Um, whenever. Oh, I did. Oh, okay. Sorry, I'll take a look at that. So. Yep, don't worry um, about Okay, so, so heat. It says Duskfall is a city of prying eyes and informants, both living and ghostly. Anything you do might be witnessed, and there's always evidence left behind. So we're going to acquire some heat. All right, guys. Do you feel like that was a smooth and quiet operation with low exposure? <laughs> uh, <laughs> no. How about no? Um, Wait, all the spirits are going to be on the hush hush. They're not going to tell anybody that I summoned. Yeah. Do we feel on the opposite end of that that it was a wild, devastating exposure? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Maybe. Yes. I, I'm gonna. <laughs> I'm going to be a little nicer to you. There was a prison riot happening that concerned more than just you. And so I'm going to scale True. that back a little bit. And I'm going to say you take four heat. Loud and chaotic with high exposure. And that sounds like us. Yeah, it, it has something to do with the fact that you um, go speak and, and destroyed an entire district. Like, a lot of people are dead. Speaking of a lot of people being dead... Um, add an additional two heat. So we're at six heat total because, um, killing was involved, whether the crew did the killing or not. Um, a lot of people died and a lot of people died because of your ghost sword. So I am going to punish you for that. You're grounded. Um, <laughs> you're not at war um, with another faction, so you're good there. Um, and I'm not going to say that this is a whole pro high profile, well connected target. Um, even though they, they kind of are, Iron Hook Prison does have a lot of uh, pull within the city. But um, there was a lot going on. And as much as you guys are wanted, um, I wouldn't say that like you're any more wanted than the other people who are wantonly killing in the prison or the spirits that are just ravaging the Dunslow district right now. Um, okay, so we have our heat. The way heat works in this game is it adds up, and when it does it hit its max, it goes resets to zero and you gain a wanted level. Um, which just means that the next thing we do, which is entanglements, um, which I'm actually going to wait till next week to do. We're going to do entanglements next week to kick off the session, but um, um, entanglements are bad things that happen as a result of your actions. That's the comeuppance at the end. Um, and they can be anything from like a demon finds you and offers you a deal that you can't refuse. Um, or one of you gets arrested. Or someone you know gets uh, beaten by the cops. There's a, there's a bunch of them. So yeah, like, um, so heat's something you want to control. That's all part of downtime. We're going to get into downtime next week. Really quick, can we just do um, XP mm. while it's fresh in my mind? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So um, every time you mark a desperate action, mark XP in that thing, um, which I think we did. I think there was two as desperate actions taken. They had one at the end there. Um, yeah. Um, so we'll just start with Ethan. Um, there's a special one at the top there. It says you addressed a challenge in X and X way. Uh, yeah, for me, it's uh, address a challenge with calculation or conspiracy. Um, I'm going to say that you did that at least once, so I would say um, one XP for you. Um, XP can be sent to either your playbook, which is the one beside special abilities, or to any of the three um, insight, prowess, or resolve. Um, uh. You get to pick where you put it. Do, do, do. You expressed your beliefs, drives, heritage, or background. Do you feel like you did that, Ethan? Um, I mean, it's it's tough, right? Because like, well, so this is this is kind of both sessions, right? But like, the first session is like filled with character creation, and so I feel like that's all beliefs, drives, heritage, or background, but not yeah. quite what's coming out here. Um, I will say that you all got one XP for that because you made a decision. You made a couple of tough decisions about whether or not you would harass poor people, about whether or not you would leave allies behind. 
I think one person made a decision of really that allies died. Yes. <laughs> well, but you also all were 100% ready to abandon Sawtooth. Um, who oh, was, yeah, was I was ready. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I was prepared to abandon him, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's okay. He wasn't really an ally necessarily. Like, that's why they were there is because it's like, how do you interact with these people? I was also right? going to totally, like, no qualms leave one of the others behind, too. So... Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so I'll say that you all can all take one XP for that. Um, I will say that you did um, address a problem. Like, I would say that you can take one XP there, um, uh, Myri, for um, addressing a problem with some sort of tinkering. Um, because Critical you definitely skill did. or mayhem? <laughs> yes, I would say you definitely addressed a problem with mayhem. Um and actually, I'll give you two, because um, you also did that with... Um, you did, never used it, but you did craft that um, that drug. Dog. The dog drugs. Um, which you still have, I guess. Um, the or maybe you didn't s work? <laughs> well, no, you don't know they didn't work. Um, actually, I'll say you probably sold them as like just like street drugs to somebody. Um, to get your, your two coin or your four coin. Um, and then struggled with issues from your vice or traumas during the session. I'm going to say that none of you did that. Um, I don't think vice really came up for any of you. Um, yeah. and nobody has traumas. So we're not really, we have, it, it's, yeah. sorry, we're not really, we're yeah. getting the hang of our characters. So it's not got to get yeah. it. Um, and I'll give you two XP as well, Adam, for addressing a challenge with stealth or evasion. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, I yeah. did that. Um, uh, yep. Belief strives heritage. We got that one. Uh, none of that. And then every time I roll a desperate action, so I should. Uh, would that be three total for me? Um, the desperate action is always put in the skill that you. Um, you yeah. So in. prowess, and then I got two yep. extra to put into whatever. Exactly. Okay. Um, actually, no, three extra. <clears throat> three extra. Okay. So you and Myri have three, and Ethan only has has two. Okay. Because while Ethan was like, like Vey was like incredibly helpful, um, he wasn't really like spidery in this particular instance. Yeah. It wasn't a good okay. score for a spider because it was a lot of action as opposed to a yeah. lot of like forethought and things like that. So I can put those into this thing where it says special abilities. Yeah. Okay. I'm and, gonna dump all three when, of them into there. Okay. Absolutely. All right, I just wanted to get that out of the way because I definitely would have forgotten by next week and I, then I wouldn't have given you XP appropriately. Yeah. Okay. I forgot to give you guys experience in the fucking Shadowrun game, so and I will hopefully remember to do that when we pick up again. Oh, yeah. That's all right. We'll, we'll figure that out. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for listening. Um, I, we will be back next week with some more Blades in the Dark. Um spooky scariness and skull duggery go follow us on Spreaker go check out our YouTube um, send me a comment so I can uh, hang out and listen um, and talk with you and uh, we will see you next week 99 goodbye